on a seasonal and bright Saturday in the Bangor. It is a presentation of the Commonwealth Coast Conference football on the Hudson Eagle Sports Network. Today we have the visiting Golden Bears of Western New England University taking on the host, Hudson University Eagles. Journal on side by Zethan Moss. I'm Ethan Snow. Good Saturday to all, all of you who have tuned in today. And Zethan, these two teams have met quite a bit in the past. It's been, they meet, they've met once a year the past couple of seasons in conference play, but they've also met in non-conference play. You have to go back a few more years for that. They have very identical records. The numbers are very identical. We should be in for an interesting game here today. Absolutely. It's going to be a good one here today. You know, in the spirit of Halloween, Hudson University trying to shake off some ghosts of years past <laughs> with a 0-5 record against this Golden Bears team. Of course, trying to change that today. And it, it really should be a good one. Of course, Golden Bears have been in the Commonwealth Coast Conference since 2017, won that three years straight after joining it. And since then has, has been right around the same level of Hudson. But again, last year, beating Hudson um, 35 to 10 at WNE. So maybe the favor of the home crowd here for Friends and Family Weekend can sway the Eagles to change that narrative. And this will only be the second time these two teams have met here in Bangor. The last time they met was in a non-conference matchup. But you have to go all the way back to September of 2018 for that game right there. But the last two matchups have been down in Western New England. They were supposed to meet here during the 2020 season. Canceled, unfortunately, due to the pandemic. So this is the first time these two teams are conference opponents and they may meet here in Bangor, Maine. As Western New England did win the coin toss, they have deferred. Huston will receive as we are just about set and ready to go as we are nearly ready to pause for the national anthem. Well, it's a great turnout here today. Some great football weather. Great football weather. You mentioned, Zethan. Temperature is seasonable. Hovering at about 50 degrees. Expected to warm a few more degrees. As now we will pause and honor America with the playing of the national anthem. And we are ready to play some football on this Saturday afternoon. Three and four teams. Both teams set with overall records of three and four, two and one in Commonwealth Coast Conference play. Western New England currently has won two of their last three. They fell to Salve Regina back on October 15th, 29-25 in a close contest. They defeated Curry 38-1 last weekend and defeated Nichols 47-14 back at the beginning of the month. Hudson currently rides a two-game winning streak with an October 8th victory over Western New excuse me, over the University of New England in the second annual trap game and defeated Curry on the road 38-25 last weekend. As it'll be Hudson back to receive the kickoff, Western New England won the toss, the first to the second half, and they will get ready to kick things off to get us rolling. It'll be Matt Gilbert back to send things on the way for Western New England. Back to receive for the Eagles, John Bell and Cam Holmes. Gilbert's kick on the way, end over end in the air. It'll be fielded at about the 11-yard line, brought up the near side by John Bell. Bell brings it up to the 30, still on his feet, up to the 35, and that is where he will be brought down 
a good return from the Eagles. John Bell out of Cumberland, Rhode Island, and that is where the Eagles will take over at their own 35-yard line. It's really good to get a nice starting field position for this offense, especially carrying a lot of momentum off of two high-scoring wins against, like you said, University of New England for that lobster trap game, and then two weeks ago against Curry College, getting that momentum, finding their stride. And we will see Nick Visser and company for the first time today. Visser, the starting quarterback once again for the Eagles. He's a junior out of Santa Rosa, California. Currently just shy of 1,500 yards passing on the season. He takes snap, shotgun, puts it into the gut. That's number 27, Jed Lober. And he will have a gain of about two on the play, and that'll bring up second down and long. Yeah, Lober has really stepped up into that running back one role. Of course, Eagles have lost Elijah Garnett, Jordan Marcano to, Marcano to injuries this year. Hurts them a lot, but Lober has stepped up very well into that role of freshman really embracing a power back. Lober, 5'11", 205 from Bellows Falls, Vermont. 158 yards on 44 attempts coming into the game as now we have laundry all over the field. And I believe that'll back the Eagles up five yards on a false start. I believe 67 was the number called. That's Damon Reynolds, the starting left guard for the Eagles. He's a junior, 5'11", 290. That's something really to watch for this Eagles team is a lot of times you get that offense rolling and then you hit a penalty and it stalls all momentum. So you really want to try and keep it clean today. Visser takes the snap, he's going to roll out to his right, throws far side, and the catch will be made out on the far side of the field. It's Dom Wilson, number 84, sophomore out of Pittsfield, Maine. He's been working a lot on that outside all year, and as you can see, getting free off of his man right there. So that'll bring it up to about the 39-yard line of Husson. That'll bring up third down and six. So first third down situation for the Eagles today on their opening drive. No score in the opening quarter. Visser lines up. Shotgun. They run a four-receiver set. He steps back to the pass. Goes middle. Has a catch complete. Down near the first, yard, first down marker. And the catch is going to be made by number five. Russ Walker, another sophomore out of Miami, Florida. He's been working really well in the slot. John Belt occupied that position last year, but stepping up in that wide receiver one role this year, Wilson has really thrived in that position. Came up a yard short of the first down. The Eagles will punt. That'll be Aaron Parody coming out. He pulls double duty for this Eagles squad. He's done it for a long time, doing the punting duties and the kicking duties. Back to receive for the Golden Bears. A.J. Hall, the kick on the way, end over end. Hall receives it about the 20. He's got it, and he is going to be brought down for only about a return of two yards. And that is where Western New England will take over on their first drive of the day at about their own 22-yard line. And very important for both these teams to start off with good field position. They struggled early in the season, especially on offense, really getting that ball moving downfield, downhill. So get, up, get good field position is going to be key for both these teams. And that is where Bryce Karstetter and crew will come out to start their opening drive of the day. Karstetter, similar numbers to Visser. He's passed for just over 1,000 yards, three receiving touch, three passing touchdowns. He's going to dump this one off into the flat. That'll be to Ian Britt, number four. He's going to bring it out to about the 31-yard line, and that'll be good enough, nearly good enough. Didn't quite make the marker. It'll bring up a second down and short. And you'll see about a two-back two set for these Golden Bears between Ian Britt and Dylan Cole. Britt will get most of the receiving yards. Cole is usually used for those runs right up the middle. Carstetter lines up, shotgun, takes a snap, puts it into the belly, and now he's only gonna be off of the races. That's Ian Britt. And he's gonna have a first down and plenty more, and they're gonna mark that at about the 43 yard line. It'll bring up a Western New England first down. Shotgun snap again, puts it right back into the belly of Britt, and he is going to be brought down in the backfield for either no gain or a loss of one. And you can see right up there making that tackle, Tucker Buzzle for this Eagles defense has been the anchor all year long. Coming into this game, he's running 78 total tackles, three interceptions, 35 of those tackles are solo. So he's really been that anchor for that for this Eagles defense in that backfield. Buzzle, a two-time winner of conference defensive player of the week. There's going to be a throw off to the near side. It is completed about the 49-yard line of Husson, 
And that one completed to number 30, number 13, Greg Perry. And he hauls it in, and that'll bring it into plus territory for Western New England, who is driving on their opening drive. They're moving pretty quick overall, which has caught the Eagles defense a little bit off guard. It'll be a third down and two from the Eagles' 49-yard line. Shotgun snap, fakes the handoff, throws to Perry, and he's going to have a first down. And a flag comes in after the play is over. So pass complete once again to Perry, but there is a flag on the field. Flag down at about the 44-yard line of Husson. I do believe they're going to call an eligible man downfield. And looks like this one will be coming back. And that'll be an ineligible man downfield against Western New England, so that'll back up the first down. And that'll set up a third down and long for the Golden Bears. Eagles kind of catch a little bit of a break there after letting up a couple of big runs. Now big third down stop for them. It's going to be important to get this ball back early. So the penalty backs them up back to their own territory at their own 46. They'll bring up a third down to seven. Karstetter, shotgun staff, he's looking back to pass. Looks down the middle of the field and nearly picked off. It's going to be incomplete. That one was off the hands of number 84, DeAndre Harris, who went just a little over his head. And I'll bring up fourth down, and the Golden Bears will punt. You see DJ Wilson, number 44, at that nose guard position right up the middle, just putting a lot of pressure immediately on Karstetter, and that really broke that play down, caused him to hurry that throw a little bit. So after it looked like West New England was going to be driving, the penalty backs him up, and then the drive stalls. Husson will get the ball back. Punt on the way. It's a low end over end kick. It's going to be fielded at the 20-yard line, taken off to the far side. Now back up to the middle, and Brian brought down at about the 30. It's Jaquan Miles returning the, the kick there. Jaquan Miles brings the kick back, and Husson will have, go out for their second drive of the day. And we wanted to take a minute to highlight Western New England's Joe McNamara out of East Providence, Rhode Island, averaging four and a half, four and a half sacks on the season, 27 tackles, 6'3", 245. He's only a junior. He's been really doing that job for the Golden Bears on the defense. Again, Visser, paralleled with Tucker Bazell. Visser with a snap, puts it into the belly of number 27, Jed Lober, and he's going to have himself quite the gain. And just short of the first down marker, it'll be second down and about one. Well, Lober, 81 yards on 21 attempts a couple of weeks ago against Curry after really stepping up against UNE. Kind of regressed a little bit in comparison to his UNE game, looking to bounce back a little bit here. Second down and one from the Husson's own 39-yard line. Visser looked in the lineup, shotgun once again. The three receiver set. He'll put it right into the belly of Lober. Lober with a stutter step. He's got the first down. And about one plus yard. And Husson will earn themselves a fresh set of downs. It'll be first down and 10 from their own 42. We saw number zero for the Golden Bears, Hippocratus Georgiatis, uh, from that outside linebacker spot. Very important for this defense. He just limped off the field. So that's going to be something to watch, see if they try to challenge on now a weaker right side. First down and 10 for Husson from their own 42. Visser takes a snap. He looks to throw. Pump fakes. He's going to find a man down the middle. And who else but John Bell at about the 49-yard line. And that'll bring up a second down and about three. It's going to be very important to get John Bell going early for the Eagles, especially a couple of weeks ago. He's had his struggles this year. He's dropped a few passes. A lot of them would be very catchable balls, especially for him, you know. He's probably pretty upset about dropping them, but trying to redeem himself here. Second down and three from their own 49-yard line. Visser sends a man in motion. Takes the snap, hands it off to Lober. Delayed handoff, and Lober's got some room. He's got the first down and a lot more. Still on his feet and dragged out of bounds in Western New England territory, close to the 35-yard line. Well, you saw the man in motion, Colin Casey, the tight end, really get out in front and get that block, which allowed Lober to get probably about 10 extra yards. Casey doesn't go in motion and get that block. That play doesn't go anywhere. So a fresh set of downs for Husson once again, driving now at the Western New England 37, first down and 10, 8.52 to play in the opening quarter. Visser with Lober in the backfield right beside him. 
Three receiver, four receiver set. Vessler takes a snap. He'll take it himself. He's got room to run. And he's going to be brought down close to the first down marker. I believe it's going to be very, very close. And no, they're going to give him the first down on the play. So Visser has a, takes it himself for a good run of 10. And he's been doing that well this year. That's really what gets his game well-rounded out. When he's really feeling it, he can hurt you with the legs. He can hurt you with that deep pass. He has a great touch trying to find his receivers deep. And, and as you can see, he can really, if a play breaks down, he can really scramble with his legs. So another first down coming for Husson, who's driving now down inside the Western New England 30. Visser sends a man in motion again. Shotgun snap, puts it into the belly of Lober. He runs off to the far side, and he's going to be dragged down for a gain of three or four on the play. Georgie, Georgie Addis back into the game for the Golden Bears, which is a good sign for them. Husson sending in a couple of substitutes to get down to under eight minutes to play. In the opening quarter, Husson with a good drive cooking, and it'll be second down and six. Now down inside the 25-yard line of the Golden Bears. One of the men in number 37, Walker Lenz, usually listed as a wide receiver, but he's been filling that kind of a Swiss Army knife role for the Eagles. Visser takes the snap. He's going to take it himself once again. He's got the first down, down inside the 15, close to the 10. And Visser with another run. And it brings up another first down. Well, like I said, again, filling a Swiss Army knife roll. He gets out and is the fullback lead blocking for his quarterback. And we've seen Visser do that a little bit more this season than we did saw him do it last season, taking them runs himself. He absorbs the hits very well. And on this drive alone, he's racked himself close to 25 rushing yards. Yeah, Visser, big body, 6'2", 220. You know, he can eat those hits if he needs to. Visser, shotgun snap, fakes the hand off the lower, looks off to his left. Throws to the end zone. He's got John Bell down close to the pylon. And they're going to mark him about a yard short of the goal line. And now they're going to I believe the officials are going to talk about this one, but we do have a flag on the far side of the field. I believe this one may be coming back. It also just looked like it was incomplete. I don't know if he had full possession before he tried to go for the pylon. And the play itself is all for naught as they're going to get Hassan on a legal man downfield. So that'll bring the ball back five yards and repeat first down. It'll be backed up to about the 17-yard the line. And it was very close. Wasn't sure if he had the catch complete as the ball did come out when he went down out of bounds. But nonetheless, Hudson will redo the down first and 15 from the Western New England 17-yard line, 629 and counting to play. It'll be a three-receiver set, two near side. One on the far side, Lober joins Visser in the backfield, and he would just put it in, fakes the handoff, finds a man at the 10, still on his feet, and he's headed to the goal line, and he is going to be brought down at about the one-yard line. That was number 80, Tyler Thompson of Rosedale, New York. Well, Tyler Thompson, one of the captains for this team, really showed up against UNE after not getting a whole lot of play time this year. You saw a, a play very similar to that where he was able to work his way through the defense on a short pass and go for the touchdown. I believe it was about a 35-yard touchdown. It's important to get him going. He's a key contributor last year. Got to get it going again this year. First and goal from the one. Visser's going to line up under center. Visser hands it off to Lober. Lober dives, and he is in for the Eagles touchdown. Husson is on the board first with 5.42 to play in the opening quarter. Well, a great opening drive for us, and you couldn't really ask for better. Limited, or not, no, not even an opening drive. You limited the mistakes, but a good scoring drive for them. Limiting the mistakes, keeping it easy and simple with the plays as Lober just punches that one in right De through the gut. Definitely a great, definitely a great second drive as they went three and out on their first drive. Very productive as Parody will line up for the extra point. Snap is good, kick is down, kick is up, and it is down the pipe. And Husson gets on the board first. They lead a 7-0 over the Western New England Golden Bears. And now we'll see what Western New England can do on their second drive. Western New England, of course, had a, what looked like they were going to have a very efficient, very, very efficient drive on their opening drive. Got a couple of first downs. Then a ineligible man downfield. Stalled the drive on third down and turned a third and short into a third and long and ended up punting it away. 
So it'll be Parity back to kick this one away for the Eagles. Want to take a quick moment to thank today's game sponsors, Performance PT, Designing a Healthier You, Greenway Equipment Sales in Ellsworth and Bangor, Nothing Runs Like a Deer, Governor's Restaurant in Casella, Giving Resources, New Life. Hustle, we're getting ready to boot this one away after they score on their second drive of the game. It was Jed Lober pounding it into the end zone from one yard out as Parody getting ready to kick this one away. Back to receive for the Golden Bears, Ryan Lawson and A.J. Hall. Kick on the way, end over end. It'll be fielded at about the eight yard line of Western New England. They'll hit, do a special handoff here now off to the far side. And it'll be a decent return for Western New England. They will take over at about their own 25 yard line. That's something that can catch you off guard a lot. You don't see it very often are the special teams trick plays, but you know, you saw an interesting kickoff formation for them when they were kicking off. They had kind of a bunch set on both sides of the field and then a little bit of a, a handoff, some trickery trying to trying to catch the special teams for the Eagles off guard. So that is where Western New England will take over. Bryce Karstetter and crew out to try to respond. Karstetter lines up shotgun. Takes the snap, puts it into the belly of his running back, and he'll bring it off to the near side and be dragged down at about the 30. It'll be a gain of about four or five on the play. Well, number 56, Tyreek Mann right there on defensive end. He's been a great asset for the Eagles. Uh, he had nine tackles, three solo against Curry a couple of weeks ago, providing a lot of pressure kind of at, at that middle and edge spot on this defensive line. Second down. Garcetta takes a snap, finds a man down the middle. He's got a first down, and he is going to be dragged down at about the 39-yard line. That's where they're going to mark forward progress, and it'll be another first down for Western New England. A.J. Hall, that's number six, getting free a lot, especially on his coverage. I'm not sure if that's something the Eagles have, have overlooked in their game plan, but he's almost been a free runner on every play. So first down and 10 from their own 39-yard line. Garcetta. Barking some orders out to his offense. Lines up with Dylan Cole in the backfield, and he will take the snap and put it into the belly of Cole, and Cole's going to get blown up at about the 41, and that's where they're going to mark forward progress. That'll bring up second down and long. And right there in the mix, Buzzle and Mann. Looks like they combined for that tackle, stopping him right away. That's what the Eagles need to do is to prevent Cole from really beating them a lot. He's been doing that against defenses all year leading this team in all-purpose yards. Very good sign for the Eagles initially. The gain of three on the play, Carstetter takes a snap, has a man open, the catch is made at about the 49. He gets to the 49-yard yard, yard line of Husson, and that'll be a first down. Nate Rosa on the catch from Bristol, Connecticut, a senior, 6'4", 175. And Western New England is in plus territory for the second time today. Well, you see Rosa running that curl route. It's always, always unbeatable, especially if you make it look like you're going as deep as you can. Car setter snap, puts it in the belly of Cole. He runs off to the near side. He's going to be dragged out of bounds at about the 45 yard line for a gain of four. They're going to mark him. They're actually going to move the ball, move the spot to the 46. So a gain of four. That'll bring up second down to six. Car setter again, lines up shotgun. Four receivers set. Takes a snap, takes the handoff, throws off to the near side, and he's got his man Rosa down near the 40-yard line, but a flag on the far side of the field. It'll be third down and short. We'll see what the penalty is. And another illegal man downfield against Western New England, and that's what stalled their last drives, Ethan. It's very interesting. You, you a lot of times when offense runs, what New England runs is those quick throws to the outside. You don't see plays like that. You don't see a, an eligible man downfield often, but you know that was an option play, very hard to read for those linemen. And now what would have been a third down and short is now a second down and long as they're back into their own territory at their own 49 yard line. Second down and 12, take it down to three minutes to play in this opening quarter. Carstetter snap, drops back, throws down the middle. He's got a man. Pass is incomplete, but flags fly in from everywhere, and there's, that is going to be a pass interference, and I believe that's going to go against number three, Alex Brown. 
Yeah, Alex Brown just draped all over him, really holding his arms back. You know, you've got he's got you beat, and that's one of the interesting things in college football. It's not a spot foul; it's it's only a 15-yard foul. So if you're gonna let up a touchdown like that, you might as well try. So that pass was intended for Rosa, who got tangled up with Alex Brown. That'll be a automatic first down, and the ball moves to the 36-yard line of Husson. So now. Western New England catches a little bit of a break after what possibly could have been another drive stalling penalty. Now first down, well inside Eagles territory. Car setter takes a snap, fakes a hand off to Cole. Looking down the field again, he's got a man, it's picked off at the 15. Intercepted at the 15 yard line, and it'll be brought back up to the 30, and that will be dragged back down. And a flag comes in after the play. That pass was intended for number 84, DeAndre Harris. So for now, the Eagles will take it back over, but we'll see what the flag is. We see Antoine Turner backed up in that deep safety spot, just coming across the middle. Read that play perfectly as it was tipped off the hands. And he was coming up to make the tackle, but the ball just goes right into his hands for that interception. So now we'll see what the flag is. It came in after the interception, so I believe Husson will keep the football, but they might be backed up as the officials are talking about it. That's the second time today, Ethan, we've seen a ball go off the hands of DeAndre Harris. Yeah, I mean, Harris is a, is a taller target, so it's, it's usually the right thing to do to try to put it up there for him. Nine times out of ten, he's going to get it right off the top, but as you can see, a little bit too high for him. So there was two flags on the play. It looked like the first flag was an illegal block in the back against Husson. That penalty was declined, but the second penalty, it was a personal foul Illegal blindside block. I didn't catch what number, but that's going to move the ball back to about the Eagles' own 12-yard line. So the Eagles keep the possession, but fortunately for Western New England, the field, as far as field position for the defense goes, wasn't a complete disaster. So that's where Hustle will take over for the third time today. Visser snap puts it into the belly of Lober, and Lober cuts it up the middle, and it'll have a gain of about two or three on the play up to the Eagles' own 15. So long, long field for Husson heading into this one. You want to try and see Visser go for a deep shot, especially if you get a nice second down position. This one isn't so great, about second and eight, second and seven. And you really want to try to get that defense or that offense rolling, catch that defense off guard. So Husson rolls back out, four receiver set, Lober in the backfield with Visser, second down and eight from their own 15. Visser snap, he's looking to throw. Looks off to the near side. He's got his man open and a catch made. And he'll be brought down at about the 20. And that is number 84, Dom Wilson again from Pittsfield, Maine. And that'll bring up third down and short. Got a great contingent for both teams here. Uh, Western New England traveled extremely well today. Got a lot of blue, especially right down in front of us. Hassan has drawn a pretty good crowd. Third down and three from the 20 yard line of Husson after the Western New England take turnover. Visser takes the snap. He's looking to throw. Got a man in the middle. Catch is going to be made. I believe that'll be good enough for a first down. Catch is made by Tyler Thompson again, and it forward progress will give him the first down. And you saw him just a tough catch right over the middle. It's a tight window to throw into as well. But that defensive back just draped all over him, able to hold on to that ball. And that's something that the Eagles need to do a little bit better on is, is the ball security, especially with the drops. Uh, ten fumbles on the year, eight lost. Something that they really need to work on. Minute 17 to play in the opening quarter. 7-0 Huston. Visser takes a snap, puts it in the belly of Lober. Lober cuts to his left, and he's going to be brought down at about the 26. It'll be gain of one yard on the play as we tick down to under a minute to play in this opening quarter. Second down and eight. They'll go down as a gain of two. Hustle on their third drive of the day after the takeaway. Visser lines up shotgun. Lober in the backfield with him. Takes the snap. He rolls up to the far side. He's got his man on the far side. And that out, tackled out of bounds. That I believe will be good enough for an Eagles first down. That was Dom Wilson again. But a flag comes down at about the 24 yard line. Looks like this one's gonna be coming back. I'm not sure who jumped, but it might have been uh, the right tackle, Ethan Hicks for the Eagles there on that right side. And it is a false start against Husson. 
So that'll repeat, that'll back the ball at five yards and it'll bring up second down once again. Eliminates the first down. 35 seconds to play, it'll be second down and 13 as it is backed up to about the 23 yard line of Husson. And for this Eagles offensive line, it's a very young offensive line. Uh, four sophomores, one junior, the only junior is Damon Reynolds there at the left guard spot. So for a young line to really settle in, especially playing some tough opponents like they have, it, it's been difficult to start off with. Yeah, a bit of a rebuilding year for that offensive line that graduated a lot of seniors last year. As Visser lines up shotgun, takes a staff. He's looking to throw. He throws off to the far side, has John Bell, but Bell's going to be blown up at about the line of scrimmage. And that'll bring up third down and long as time is going to tick out on the first quarter. Hudson in no hurry to get a playoff. So that is how the first quarter will come to an end. It'll be a third down and long for Husson at their own 22. They lead it 7 to nothing. We're going to take a timeout. And we will be back for the second quarter. You're watching Husson Eagles football on the Husson Eagles Sports Network. Settling is all about relationships and building trust. At Greenway, it's our people that have built the business. We're fortunate to have a team with years of experience. They know John Deere equipment inside and out and go the extra mile to take care of our customers. And right now is a great time to talk to one of us about a new tractor. Get 0% APR financing for 72 months on a John Deere compact utility tractor. Nothing runs like a deer. From Greenway Equipment Sales, family owned and operated since 1994. Husson makes it a priority of theirs to make sure each of their students are well-rounded and that we're prepared to go into the future. I mean, it's very rare to have a college that can emphasize the professor-student interaction, and Husson hits it right on the head. Instead of just you know sitting in the classroom, it's a great way to get hands-on experience. I'm actually out here doing things and seeing how things work. After being here and meeting the people, I decided this is where I wanted to be, that there was no better option for me. Back from the Wicked Sports Complex on the campus of Husson University. He's getting ready to start the second quarter. It'll be third down and long for Husson. Visser takes a snap, drops back, looking to throw. He's got his man open, and a catch is going to be made at about the 32-yard line of, Huss of Husson, but it'll be short of the first down marker, and Husson will punt. Pass was completed. Catch is made by 84, Dom Wilson, and Aaron Parody will come up to punt. Now, typically we see the Eagles go for it a lot on fourth down, but since Alfred State, a few weeks ago here at the Winkin, uh, they've really laid back on that. They haven't attempted a fourth down um, since, I believe, that game, actually. High snap to parity. He just kicks the kick away. It's end over end. It's going to take a Husson bounce at about the 45, and it's going to roll out of bounds at the 38-yard line of UNE, and that is where they will take over, excuse me, for Western New England, and that is where they will take over Western England still trying to get on the board after they drove into Husson, pretty far into Husson territory their last drive, but a interception ended the drive for them. That's exactly, exactly what you want to do on the defensive side of the ball to really back your quarterback up after that turnover. So, Karstetter and crew back on the field. They will start from their own 38-yard line. Snap is taken, drop back. Here's a throw to the near side, and it's going to be overthrown. That'll bring up second down and 10. Pass was intended to number 83. It's Tyler Borwat, sophomore, trying to get that. Not yeah. listed on my depth chart here. Yeah, we're we'll uh, trying to find that one. <laughs> yeah, right, but it'll be second down and 10. Carstetter takes a snap, fakes the handoff, throws far side. It'll be completed by Harris, and he's going to be up close to the first down marker. Damian Harris with another reception after his la after the last time they tried going to him, it was off his hands. And that's what resulted in the turnover, but it'll be third down and one from their own 
48 yard line snap is taken, handed off to Cole and he's still on his feet in the plus territory. He's got the first down and plenty more. He'll be brought down at about the Eagles 44 yard line. And again, the ground game paying dividends for the Golden Bears. Yeah, well, very tough run. Again, you saw Tyler Boyle at number 83 out ahead trying to get those blocks for him and pays dividends. Ian Britt back in the backfield with Carstetter. He takes a snap, puts it in the belly of Britt. Britt up the middle. He's going to be dragged down. Poor progress will give him a gain of about two yards on the play. That'll bring up second down and long for the Golden Bears inside Eagles territory. Early second quarter from the Wicked Sports Complex. Once again, joined alongside by Zethan Moss. I'm Ethan Snow. Second to last home game for Huston Eagles football this season. They'll be back here at the Winkin next Saturday for Senior Day when they'll take on Nichols before going on the road to take on Salve Regina in the season finale. As car center snap goes over his head, he's got to roll up to the near side. He's got to throw, pass complete. And they're going to mark him out of bounds at about the 40. Well, a great job by Karstetter trying to turn really a broken play into a gain. That one goes over his head. It's very I interesting for this Eagles defense. They have not blitzed yet. Ryan Larson makes the completion on the near side. It'll bring up third down and five from the 39-yard line of Husson. Big play here coming up for both sides. Karstetter with the snap. He drops back. He's looking to pass. And that pass is going to be knocked down. It's number 59, Jamal Durant. Getting his hand up there to knock that one down. Beautifully timed. So that'll bring up fourth down and five. And for now, the offense is staying on the field. Now, this isn't a decision that really has, has been bad for the Golden Bears. 61% on, on fourth down, 19 for 31 attempts. So not surprising to see them go for it here. And that they will. They're going to go for it on fourth down and five. 12-31 to play in the second quarter. Carstetter lines up. He takes a snap, looks to throw. Now he's going to roll off. He's under pressure, beats the pressure, and now he's got plenty of room to run. He's got the first down, and he's going to be brought down at about the 31 or 32-yard line. Good enough for a Golden Bears first down. Well, that was the first time the Eagles showed blitz, and as you can see, it did not pay off for them. It's a very, it's a risky call on fourth down to go for a blitz. And as you can see, Carstetter was able to exploit that running to his outside after his pocket collapses. So it'll be a fresh set of downs for, West, for Western New England as the drive, they keep this drive alive. It'll be from the Eagles 32 yard line. Carstetter lines up shotgun, takes a snap, takes a hand off to Britt. Looks down the middle of the field, he's got a man open and he's got a pass complete. Down inside the 15, catch is made by Ryan Larson. And Western New England is into the red zone for the first time today. Carstetter's really been trying to throw it into some tight windows. You saw right there, Tucker Buzzle over the middle, almost deflecting that pass. So first down and 10 from the 12-yard line of Husson. Carstetter sends a man in motion. Snap May puts it into the belly of Ian Britt. And he will be brought down for about a gain of one. It'll be up to the Eagles, one or two on the play. They're going to mark it second down and eight at the Eagles 10 yard line. Seven nothing Hudson, Western New England trying to respond. They are driving what has been their most efficient drive of the day so far. They've really slowed down their pace from the first two drives and I think that's been working a lot better for them. Carstetter lines up shotgun, three receiver set. And it'll be a little pitch to Britt. Britt's got a wide open lane. He's going to be dragged down inside the five. And Britt was about one or two steps away from having an easy walk into the end zone. But a great defensive play comes up. It'll be first down and goal. No, excuse me. They're going to mark it third down and one at the Husson three-yard line. But a great defensive play made there to keep him out of the end zone. Big stop for the Eagles if they can get this one done. Third down and one from the Eagles three. Western England trying to tie the game. Carstetter takes a snap, puts it in the belly of Cole, and he runs up the middle, and that's a Western New England touchdown with 10-19 to play in the second quarter. And the Golden Bears string together a very efficient drive, and it is now 7-6. to six. 
Wolford Cole, he's just been so reliable in the red zone all year. Eight touchdowns heading into this one, second in the Commonwealth Coast Conference. Now making it nine. Is coming out to try to tie the game with the extra point. That is Matt Gilbert to tie it at seven. Kick is up and it is through. And we are tied at seven with 10-19 to play in the second quarter. And after the drive before that resulted in the takeaway, you were driving inside Eagles territory. You turned the ball over on, an inter on a tip ball interception. You get the ball right back early in the second, and you turn it into and you turn it into a very efficient drive, and you go down and score the game. Couldn't have asked for a better recovery for the Golden Bears. Exactly, just like you said, it's it's really just what you want to try and bounce back, especially from a little little bit of some sloppy play. They slowed down the cadence on that drive. Was really taking the time they needed to to get everything set. Everybody has the game plan right, and it, it pays off for them. So now Husson will be out. Try to, to respond once again. And it'll be Gilbert back to kick this one back to Husson. John Bell and Cam Holmes are back to return. I see this interesting bunch formation by the Golden Bears. Not something I've seen before. Something a little bit different. Kick is on the way. It is end over end. It'll be fielded by Holmes at about the 10 yard line. He'll bring it up. Plenty of space. He brings it up to the 30. Touch, he stays on his feet and he dives at a great return from Holmes. And Husson will have great field position as they will begin at their own 40 yard line. Great move to break the tackle on that special teams. I believe that was number 23 for the Golden Bears. Breaking that tackle and getting a few extra yards. It's going to be, like I said, it's going to be very important for both these teams to have good field position. He was given a lot of space too. They took it there, they didn't seem like they were hurrying to try to get to the spot. He had a lot of open space to run which resulted in a great return as well. So Visser and company back on the field. They'll take over from their own 40. Visser takes a snap, a quick handoff to Lober. Lober brings it to the near side. And Lober is going to be dragged out of bounds for a gain of three or four on the play. It'll be second down from about the 44. As the Western New England faithful, quite a few of them sitting in front of us here. As Ethan calling, wanted a hold on the play. They will not get it. And that'll be six, second down in six from the 44-yard line. Time still ticking away, under 10 minutes to play in the first half. For the Eagles, they're in no rush. They're trying to eat as much clock as they can. So Visser will line back up shotgun. Takes a snap. Now he'll look to throw. It'll be a quick pass near side. Caught, catch made by Tyler Thompson. It'll only be a gain of a couple on the play. They're going to mark him at the Eagles' 48-yard line. It'll be third down and two. Well, we see the Golden Bears signaling for fourth down. Uh, it's not, not everybody's on the same page. Tom Brady-esque there. <laughs> so it'll be third down and one from the 48-yard line. Excuse me, they're going to move, they moved it up to the 49-yard line. Big third down here for Husson. Western New England trying to carry some momentum and get themselves a stop. Visser lines up shotgun. Takes a stat, puts it in the belly of Lober. Lober up the middle, and it's going to be close. I believe forward progress is going to give him the first down. They're going to mark him at about the 50. And I believe. By, a no, by the nose of the football, they're going to get the first down. It was a very tough call there. I mean, number 56, Caden Porter, the junior at the nose guard position for the Golden Bears was right there to try to break up the play. But again, it's so hard to, to pull him back when all of his, his momentum is going forward. And a little bit of a generous spot helps out the Eagles to get that fourth, that, that third down conversion. As you mentioned, Zethan, Lober, a big guy, 5'11", 205. That's going to be hard to stop, especially when momentum's carrying him forward. So it'll be first down and 10 from midfield. Visser with a snap, fakes the handoff to Loberg, has a man open. On the far side, out into the flat, and he'll get a few more yards and be brought down on about the 46-yard line of Western New England. Catch is made by number 83 once again out on that far side. See Cole and Casey usually getting a lot of the receiving work at the tight end spot. And the Eagles, we say this all year, they lost a lot of seniors. One of the big ones was Aiden Hogan in the tight end spot. He could do both. He could block. He could catch a pass. Exactly what you want from a tight end. So it's big shoes to fill. 
and the, the duo of, of Casey and Walker has been doing it well. Fisher snap, rolls off to the near side, still on his feet, has a man open, catch is gonna be made at about the 44, 43 yard line. Dom Wilson on the catch. And that'll bring up third down and short again. It'll be third and three as we take down to seven and a half to play in the half. You saw a lot of pressure coming from the Golden Bears. They've been putting a lot of pressure on Visser, and that's been important for them. They haven't been letting plays develop deep. Georgiadis on the outside. You saw, I believe, Jake Chase on coming through. It's a lot of pressure chasing Visser around. So another third down coming up again for us in third and three from the New Western New England 44. Visser takes a snap, under pressure, still rolling back, avoids the pressure, Throw has a short pass to Wilson. Wilson gets it up the field, and he's going to have himself a first down as they're going to mark him out at about the 39-yard line. Good enough for an Eagles first down. Yeah, like you said, that was great game sense coming back to the ball. That's exactly what they teach you. That's one of the fundamentals. Come back to the ball when a play starts to break down. Tyler Thompson on the outside gets there, gets a little bit open. Just enough of a window to for Visser to get it to him and get that first down. So first down and 10 from the Western New England 39. Husson trying to respond after Western New England scored to tie the game at seven. Three receiver set for the Eagles. Visser lines up shotgun. Lober in the backfield with him. Casey in motion, takes a snap, puts it in the belly of Lober. Lober looks like he fell and he'll bring it back up to the 40. There's gonna be a loss of one on the play. Well, losing your footing can, can really hurt you, especially on that play. It looked like he had a nice gap to get a, a sizable gain on that play. So that'll back it up, second down and 11 on a loss of one. It looks like Lober lost his footing. Taking out of six minutes to play in this second half, excuse me, first half. In the tie game, seven apiece. Hudson looking to take the lead right back. They scored in the first quarter. Visser takes a snap, he's looking to throw, under pressure immediately, and he's gonna get brought down in about midfield, as once again, Western New England brought the pressure and they get to him, and a huge loss, they're gonna mark him down at about the 48 yard line, he's gonna back it, back it up for a third down and forever. Well, that finally pays off for the Golden Bears to get that pressure on him. Again, they've been doing that all game, and this offensive line has been holding up well for the Eagles, but that time, I believe that was number 52, uh, excuse me, number 55, Joe Shea coming through and really separating that offensive line to get the rest of his team there and get that sack. Third down and 19. They have to get to the 31-yard line for a first down. Visser lines up shotgun, takes a snap. He's looking to throw immediately, looking down the middle of the field. He's got John Bell open. He's got the catch, and he's got the first down at about the 27-yard line. Just, First down, Husson. He just catches the Golden Bears off guard. They're, they were split up for a deep pass on the outside, but he just goes on the middle, simple little inside post route, and gets, gets them off guard, splits the safeties, and, and goes for that first down. So great play on third down and 19. Sets up an Eagles first down at the 27-yard line of Western New England. And we are going to have a timeout call, but I believe it will be the Eagles will spend the first of their three timeouts in this first half. It was actually Western New England taking that timeout. Western New, yep, Western New England takes the timeout. We will take a quick 30 second timeout as well. You are watching Hudson Eagles football on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Back from the Wicked Sports Complex on the campus of Husson University, late second quarter in this Commonwealth Coast Conference football matchup. Husson Eagles taking on the Western New England Golden Bears alongside Zetha Moss, I'm Ethan Snow. First down and 10 for the Eagles at the Western New England 27 yard line. Out of the Western New England timeout, Visser, shotgun snap, it's gonna be a pitch to the far side. Lober, Lober up the middle trying to create some space, still on his feet, 
And he's going to be dragged down at about the 22-yard line of Western New England for a good gain. You see that guard get out in front of him. I believe that was Aiden Crone getting out in front of him, getting that block. And, and that play just really worked out well for the Eagles. It hadn't worked out a couple of times. They've tried it a little bit earlier. Lover usually getting blown up right at the line of scrimmage. And he gets the block this time. Second out of five from the 22-yard line. Visser takes another shotgun snap. Back into the belly of Lober. Lober up the middle, and he'll have a gain of a few more. We're going to mark him at the 19-yard line. to bring up third down and short. Again, we mentioned pregame Lober getting a lot of attempts. He had 20 att 21 attempts excuse me, against Curry a couple of weeks ago, and we're seeing that volume again this week. But it's it's been working a little bit better for him. Only 81 yards against Curry on those 21 attempts, which isn't a great average, but I think he's expanding that average this time around. Christian Walker into the game, tight end. Two receivers set. Visser lines up shotgun. He takes a snap, fakes the handoff to Lober. Visser keeps it himself. He's going to have enough for a first down, but a flag comes flying in from the backfield. So at the moment, it's good enough for a first down, but I believe this one may be coming back. Maybe a holding against the offense. They're going against number 67, Damon Reynolds. So that's the second penalty of the game. And again, we've, we've mentioned a couple of times, really for both these offenses, it's the penalties that kill that momentum, less so than the defense. Uh, very high-powered offense for both teams and really just shoot themselves in the foot. So instead of a third down and short, it's going to bring up a third down and long, third and 12, back at the 31-yard line. Now, Husson converted a third and 19 earlier on in this drive. We'll see what they can do it again. I was going to say third and 12, but that's no problem. <laughs> so a three-receiver set. They'll bring two to the near side. Visser lines up shotgun, takes the snap. He's driving Matt looking to throw. And he's going to get fumbled. The ball is loose, and it's going to be recovered by Western New England at about the 41-yard line. And the Western New England comes up with a takeaway of their own, and that'll bring up a first down as Western New England takes back over. Well, it was number 14, Tom, Thomas Gasparro, the outside linebacker spot. Again, they're showing blitz that entire time and really not picking up on it as a right tackle for the Eagles as Visser just gets blown up and, and Georgiatis recovers that ball. So now Western New England with three minutes to play in the second quarter. Going to have a chance to not only take the lead, but also they deferred the, they deferred the coin toss so they will receive the second half kickoff. So a chance to double up here. Snap taken, pass far side. It's going to be caught by Harris. And he's dragged out of bounds into Eagles territory at about the 47. Good enough for a first down. The Eagles really need to cover that outside a lot better. It hurt them a lot against Plymouth State in that home opener uh, in September. And again, it's hurting them a lot uh, this time around. First down and 10 from the 47. Carstetter takes the snap, fakes the handoff. Now he's going to take off and try to run with it. Sets his feet, tries to throw. Detended for Harris. It is incomplete. Pass a little bit underthrown. It'll bring up third down and short. Well, if he had a little more on it, that might have been picked off. Uh, right there in, in coverage. That's number 19 for the Eagles. Josh Ladipo in that safety position. So third down and short from the 50 yard line at midfield. Hudson trying to get a stop here after they turn the ball over. Carstetter lines up shotgun, three, four receiver set, takes a snap, hands it off, and Britt is gonna be across the first down marker, brought down at the 46 yard line. That is good enough for a Golden Bears first down. Weaving his way through a lot of traffic to get that one, the, the Eagles just came right through on that blitz. I think they were expecting a pass. Uh, all, all three of the Eagles on that line came through, and obviously when that happens, you have a free line. You can get a few yards before those linebackers come up. 7-7 seven to seven the score, ticking down to 2-10 to play in the half. Carstetter takes the snap, fakes the handoff, throws to the near side. Got a man open in the flat, and he's going to be brought down in the backfield. Catch was made by number 6, A.J. Hall, and that, he, and that will be a loss of one on the play. It'll bring up second down and 11. Big play by number 35, Evan Duranzel on the outside. Usually a linebacker, but in coverage for that one. 
and gets it done. Reads that play really well. So second down and 11, taking down to a minute 40 and counting to play in this second quarter. Carstetter, shotgun snap, fakes the handoff, throws middle again, and nobody home. And now a late flag comes in, and I believe it's going to be pass interference as that, th as that throw was intended for number 15 of the Golden Bears. Now, he was blown up at the line, but correct me if I'm wrong, if it's within three yards of the line of scrimmage, any contact is legal. That's Pat Harrigan the pass was intended to. So they're going to talk about it here. Because it was so close to the line of scrimmage, I do think that's actually a legal play. But that may not be the case. The flag came in late. Very late. And it is going to be pass interference called against the defense. I think it was board, It was definitely borderline, Ethan, as far as that five-yard threshold. But Western New England is going to get the benefit of the doubt. And that will be... You know, is, is it going to be pass interference or illegal contact? I believe it might be. Either way, if there. It's, if it's an illegal contact, it's a five-yard penalty and no automatic first down. And so and it's going to be. Gonna call it. Yeah, okay, that makes yep. a little bit more sense than the pass interference. Yep, illegal contact. So it will be an automatic. It will be an automatic first down. From, it'll be at about the 41-yard line of Husson with a minute 29 to play. Clock did stop with the penalty. Carstetter, shotgun snap, hands it off. The, keeps it himself. Now a pitch out to the far side to Hall, and he's going to get knocked out of bounds close to the first down marker. Well, what a great play design. You, you fake the handoff, and then you fake the QB run. And as you can see, the defense was really just <laughs> completely lost on that play initially. You get a nice, sizable gain out of it. But that's something you run once, you can't run it again. Gain of seven on the play, second down and three from the 34. Karstetter takes a snap, hands it off to Britt. And he'll have a gain of about two on the play. Clock still running down, minute 10 to play. Well, met by a wall of Eagles on that one. That's what you need to do. You need to get that defensive line working to stop this run. I believe that was promised to Quacha on that play. Third down and two, now under a minute remaining in the half. Car setter. Lines up shotgun, takes a snap, hands, fakes the handoff, throws to the far side, has Harris open. He makes the catch. He's going to be dragged down. He stays in bounds, but the clock stops with the first down. So Western Union keeping the drive alive, trying to go into the locker room with a lead. 38, the clock starts again. Now that everybody is set, 34 seconds and counting to play. Carstetter lines up. Back shotgun, takes a snap again, fakes the handoff, and now a flag comes flying in. And that's going to be a false start against the Western New England Golden Bears. And that would, I believe that would constitute a 10 second runoff. I believe Western New England will use a timeout to prevent that 10 second runoff. So they'll use their second timeout of the half. Well, 27 seconds left to go. You're not in a great field position to try and go for a touchdown, but your kicker, Matt Gilbert, has a little bit of a leg on him. Uh, he's made a 50 or 46 yard field goal against Curry, but he's only six of 11 on field goal attempts on the year. So maybe a little bit unreliable, but he's got the leg for it, certainly. So interesting spot here. Ball is at about the 30, 31 at the moment. I mean, you were talking just hypo hypothetically speaking, you're talking at least a 50-yarder from this spot right here. Yeah, you want to get a little bit further down the field. You certainly have the time for it. But I, I, I do believe with 27 seconds left, it's going to be tough to get a touchdown or set yourself up well for a touchdown. You only have about two or three good plays. And they have one, one they have one timeout to spend. Ball at, spotted at about the 31-yard line. False start, back him back up five yards. So it'll be first down of 15, 27 seconds to play. Now, if you do get the first down... You can't hurry up without spending a timeout because the clock in college football clock stops on a first down. But here we go, Karstetter with a four-receiver set. 
Shotgun snap, fakes the handoff. He's going to throw deep down the field intended for Harris. It's off his fingertips and incomplete. Only ran off about six seconds. Still 21 seconds to play at second down and 15. Well, that's a great idea, but great coverage by Antoine Turner. Just all over him and not really allowing him much space to try and go up and get that ball. So second down and 15 here. A Furt got to get it to about the 21-yard line of Husson for a first down. Four receiver set once again. Car Setter takes a snap. He's dropping back under pressure. Throws down the middle. He's got a man open and a catch complete. Pat. Receiver will be brought down. That is going to be number 80, Nate Rosa. Brought down in the open field. And that will take it down to nine seconds to play. And we have a man down on the field in a Western in New England. That's, that's both their quarterback and I believe their right guard. And that was a really powerful blitz. Car Setter down on one knee. As you mentioned, one of their guards is down on the field. So I believe this will be. The clock stops with the injury, but I believe I'm not I believe I know in the NFL if there's an injury timeout inside two minutes, you spend the timeout. I'm not sure if that's still a college rule or not. I believe this does depend on referee discretion depending on the injury. Um, of course obviously it's not really something you want to see at this position. But uh, last week we saw something similar. A, a player went down inside of two minutes uh, with, with only one timeout left, and they did charge the timeout, and they're going to do the same thing here. As long as it's consistent, it's a good thing. So that'll so Western New England will spend their final timeout as Carstetter returns to his feet. But now we check on the guard of Western New England as he is helped to his feet. That's number 57. Zach Smith, sophomore, 6'3", 245, out of Newtown, Connecticut. So both walking off under their own power. That's a great thing. Smith with his helmet off. Looks like they'll probably take him out behind the bench to check him out a little more, but great to see him walk off the field. So in nine seconds to play, it'll be third down and 11 from the 27-yard line of Husson. Carstetter. Carstetter had to come out of the game because of the injury timeout. So that'll send in back up. No, they're going to try the field goal. They're going to bring out Gilbert and try the field goal on third down. This will be about a 40-some-odd-yard field goal. I can't, do, I can't do the quick math in my head. Snap is down, kick is up, and that is going to fall Gosh, just oh. short, and it is no good. And with four seconds to play, Husson will take back over. An interesting pl interesting decision there from Western New England. I would I would. I would have thought they would have tried at least one more play before, or one more play. Well, you go with the 44 yarder, you know you're not, most likely not going to let up some points. Um, and trust your, your kicker who's had some long field goals on the season, but a little bit short on that one. Just came up a little short was Gilbert and also for Western New England, no harm, no foul, you get the, you get the second half kickoff and Hustle will just come out here and kneel it down. And that will send it to halftime after the missed 44-yarder off the foot of Matt Gilbert. One score apiece for each team as we're going to head to, as each team will head to the locker room. We're going to step aside, but when we come back in a couple minutes, we'll break down the first half for you. You're watching Hudson Eagles football on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Five years ago, we started this journey of recycling, and with that same ingenuity, with that same innovation, and with that same entrepreneurship, we're approaching our next 45 years. We have an obligation to figure out how we can consume less, how we can recycle more, how we can create more sustainable products, and how we help our customers enable that. We owe it to the future generations to continue to do better and recycle better. If you want a place where you can be seen as an individual and know what you're doing and have a career to look forward to, this is your place.
Nothing runs like a deer. Whether you have a lawn to mow, a driveway to plow, or a garden to till, our customers know you can't beat the quality and reliability of a John Deere. And right now at Greenway Equipment Sales, we have a great offer for you. Get 0% APR fixed rate financing for 72 months on a John Deere compact utility tractor with a six-year powertrain warranty. For more offers, go to GreenwayEquipment.com. See the Smith Brothers today at Greenway Equipment Sales, Ellsworth, and Bangor. Choosing a school is really difficult, but I have never felt like I should have gone somewhere else. The thing about I like about the school, the class sizes are smaller. Making friends is easier here because of the fact that you are such a tight-knit community. I was shooting around a basketball, that's how I met my first friend. You meet a lot of new people from different areas of the world. I feel like I've grown so much here. And there's so many amazing people that work here to learn from. I definitely made the right decision coming to Hassan. Hassan makes it a priority of theirs to make sure each of their students are well-rounded and that we're prepared to go into the future. I mean, it's very rare to have a college that can emphasize the professor-student interaction, and Hassan hits it right on the head. Instead of just you know sitting in the classroom, it's a great way to get hands-on experience. I'm actually out here doing things and seeing how things work. After being here and meeting the people, I decided this is where I wanted to be, that there was no better option for me. Selling is all about relationships and building trust. At Greenway, it's our people that have built the business. We're fortunate to have a team with years of experience. They know John Deere equipment inside and out and go the extra mile to take care of our customers. And right now is a great time to talk to one of us about a new tractor. Get 0% APR financing for 72 months on a John Deere compact utility tractor. Nothing runs like a deer. From Greenway Equipment Sales, family owned and operated since 1994. Back here from the Wicked Sports Complex on the campus of Hudson University. We're at halftime in this Commonwealth Coast Conference football matchup. Western New England Golden Bears and the Hudson University Eagles. Alongside Zethan Moss, I'm Ethan Snow. Zethan, uh, very, very low scoring first half and what we were kind of expecting. We thought maybe we were expecting maybe a little bit more of some offense, but um, the two, the couple scoring drives, the scoring drive that each team has managed to put together, very efficient. But uh, the defense has also been something to highlight today as well. Yeah, absolutely. For both these teams, the defense has really been holding up. A, lo a lot of those mistakes, obviously, you can pinpoint on that offensive line for committing those penalties. But a lot of times that offensive line only commits those penalties because they're beat. So a lot of times you can highlight that defense outside linebacker spots, defensive ends for really causing a lot of those penalties, those holding penalties, false starts, uh, getting that offensive line to jump off but a really great performance for Visser coming out of, of that first half. 13 for 13, 
I believe that should be a career record. If it's not, I'd be very impressed. Um, but 13 straight completions to start his day, really not too much better that you can get. Now, Visser, have been, Visser has been very much efficient. We've seen him get worked on not only in the air, but on the ground as well. And really the only hiccup we saw, the lost fumble on a, lost fumble on a sack on their last on their last drive of the of the half but uh, other than that there's been very much a great day for Visser so far he's only been sacked twice so far 89 yard only 89 yards uh, passing but that just shows you what their ground game has been like uh, and uh, that all starts with Jed Lober 13 attempts for 52 yards he's net of 50 yards and he scored the one lone touchdown for the Eagles so far today in a long in a long rush of 14 so uh, we've seen Lober, who, as you mentioned earlier on in the broadcast, Ethan, first freshman, has been uh, filling in big shoes for the two Eagles, two lead backs who have gone down with injuries this season. And so far today, he is showing why he's in that backup. He's in that backup role, and he's doing a tremendous job. And he's he's really been seeing a lot of carries, which is not something you see a lot, especially for a freshman. But he's been, like you said, he's been really filling those shoes well. And, and doing his job. And we'll look over on the side of the Golden Bears. Bryce Karstetter, he's eight of, nine of 15, was for 75 yards with a long of 20. And that one interception, that one interception late in the first quarter wasn't his fault. It was tipped off the hands of Damian of, uh, Harris. But uh, Karstetter has been fairly efficient as well. And he has had a variety of receivers he's targeted. Uh, Larson has been one, A.J. Hall, Harris, Rosa has had a couple of receptions, and Perry has had one reception as well. Larson currently leading all receivers with 20 yards receiving. One reception for 20 yards, and that leads all receivers so far. Yeah, and it's, it's been very interesting for the Golden Bears offense. It's kind of been all over the place. You've seen some runs right up the middle. You've seen some interesting plays. They've tried to take a few deep shots. Those haven't quite worked out. But for the Eagles' defense, it's been really been forcing the offense to be really one-dimensional, trying to get them into tight throws or running up the middle. It's one of the two of them. And those tight throws have not really paid off in, in a few instances. And look at, and while neither team has gone into the air too much, as we mentioned, Jed Lober has been taking care of things very well on the ground for Husson. The Golden Bears have looked to two backs Ian Britt and those being both Ian Britt and Dylan Cole Britt currently leading rushing for the Golden Bears nine attempts for 43 yards with a long rush of 12 and then of course we saw Dylan Cole four four attempts for 15 yards and he has scored the one touchdown for the Golden Bears They've had that. They've had that one-two ten, and we've kind of seen each back on alternating drives, and it's been very efficient for the Golden Bears. Yeah, to be able to mix it up like that, have that depth where you can trust both of those backs to get you yardage and and show up. You see Cole getting a lot of the red zone touches for this offense, and it's it's been it paid off for him in that one drive. He was able to punch it in from about three yards out and get his. I believe tied for first now in the Commonwealth Coast Conference with nine rushing touchdowns. And it's been doing that all year. As we look at the overall team stats, first downs about even. Western New England leads at 11 to 10. Uh, rushing attempt, as we mentioned, both teams rushing the ball a bunch today. Rushing attempts about even. Husson leading the category 18 to 16. Um, so far, what Western New England winning the overall ground game as far as yardage goes, 79 to 50. Um, also have with a little bit more average, 4.9 yards per carry on average so far in that first half. Uh, Husson leading in the passing yards category with 89 to 75. As we look at another thing we wanted to note, Zethan, we saw, and this is something that has been an issue with Husson for quite a while now, the penalty yardage. So far, Husson Seven penalties for 15 yards, for 57 yards, excuse me, compared to Western New England's three yards for three penalties for 15 yards. Now, usually that, that seven penalties is, is something you see at the end of the game, not at the end of the first half. So, again, Husson usually just shoots themselves in the foot most of these times. Getting a drive going or, or getting a key stop but coming away with a penalty 
and erasing all of that hard work. Third out efficiency, something I wanted to note as well. Hudson, 50, so far 50% on third downs. They are four for eight. Western New England not too far behind, three for seven on third downs. Hudson has controlled the ball a bunch, the beating Western New England in time of possession, 18 minutes, 29 seconds compared to Western New England's 11 minutes, 31 seconds so far. And Hudson on the few, they had a couple of long drives going. They managed to score on one of them. The other drive, unfortunately, ended in that turnover. But they have been, they've been doing, they did a good job in that first half, controlling the tempo, keeping the, t kind of keeping, going at their own pace, controlling the time. And then, now that we think about it, they did hold the ball for a lot in that first half. That's, that's when Husson really thrives, is when they're going at their own tempo. They're not trying to force anything. As you see, Visser 13 for 13 uh, a couple of weeks ago against, against UNE for that lobster trap game. Coming away in the first half, the Eagles had almost 21 minutes of possession out of 30 minutes of play. And, and it was a very efficient offense for the Eagles. So to come out of the locker room into the second half, I think they need to air it out a little bit more. Trust the arm of Visser. He's, he's hot right now. He's on a good start. So keep him rolling. Keep his receivers going. They've been getting open quite a bit. So we are at halftime here from the Wicked Sports Complex. We're going to step aside for a couple more minutes. When we come back, we'll get you ready for the second half, and we'll take a look around the rest of the Commonwealth Coast Conference. You're watching Hudson Eagles football on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Selling is all about relationships and building trust. At Greenway, it's our people that have built the business. We're fortunate to have a team with years of experience. They know John Deere equipment inside and out and go the extra mile to take care of our customers. And right now is a great time to talk to one of us about a new tractor. Get 0% APR financing for 72 months on a John Deere compact utility tractor. Nothing runs like a deer. From Greenway Equipment Sales, family owned and operated since 1994.
you want a place where you can be seen as an individual and know what you're doing and have a career to look forward to, this is your place. Back from the Wicked Sports Complex on the campus of Husson University. We are in late halftime from the Wicked in this Commonwealth Coast Conference football matchup between the visiting Golden Bears of Western New England University and the Husson University Eagles. Once again, joined alongside by Zethan Moss, I'm Ethan Snow. Tie game 7 all in this second to last home game for the Eagles in this 2022 season. Eagles score their only touchdown of the game back in the first quarter and Western New England got on the board fairly late in the second quarter and that is where we stand at 7-7. Western New England will receive the second half kickoff as they deferred in they deferred back before the game started. We'll take a quick look around the Commonwealth Coast Conference. Only three other conference matchups taking place today. One of those being here. Another one happening down in Boston at Curry Co College as Endicott rolls into Curry. That game currently scoreless. 8.46 to play in the first quarter. And Salve Regina and Western New England, uh, excuse me, University of New England currently playing down in Biddeford today. That game underway with the Nor'easters leading 3 to nothing over the, go over the Salve Regina Seahawks. Right there on the blue turf, it's a it's a great field, but I don't know I don't know how I feel about the blue turf. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got the blue turf down there. Um, Boise State plays on blue, on turf. blue turf. Yep. Um, and then uh, Washington State has red turf. Yep. That's a I remember uh, uh, UMaine had to play there a few <laughs> years back. Watching that game, it was really weird. Is that when when Washington State was like number twenty four or something like that? Something like that. Yeah, because that was a national semifinal. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, number 24, uh, Endicott here in this, is, in this conference is ranked uh, actually number 24 nationally, also undefeated 7-0 on the season. But both these teams have a shot to win the Commonwealth Coast, Coast Conference if Endicott were to lose today. Yes, so. well, each of these teams 2-1 and one in conference play. So a big game here from Huston University. We are just about set and ready to go to get this second half underway. It'll be Aaron Parody kicking things off to Western New England to get this third quarter underway. A kick is on the way. It is in the air, end over end. It'll be fielded at the six-yard line, and this will be brought up. On the return is Ryan Larson, and he will be brought down at about the 26, 27 yard line of Western New England as that is where they will start this second half. 
Well, again, Pr Bryce Karstetter went down on a very rough, heavy blitz to end the second half. He's coming back out, as well as his left tackle, Zach Smith. Both of them went down very hard. Especially Smith, who was down on the ground and had to be helped up, but did return to the sideline on his feet. Karstetter lines up shotgun, three receiver set. Sends a man in motion, that's Hall. Takes a snap, hands it off to Cole. And he will have a gain of a couple before being dragged out, dragged down in the backfield. But forward progress will give him a gain of about a yard. So that'll set up second down and nine. Well, Adam Bertrand gets there quickly. He compliments Tucker Buzzle really well. Buzzle usually plays on that left side from the defensive point of view. Uh, Bertrand compliments him really well on the right. And as you can see, as that one goes off right, it goes right into Bertrand's arms. So, second down and eight from the 30. They gave him a gain of two on the play. Car setter sends Cole to his left. Takes a snap, fakes handoff, throws to the near side, catches made, and dragged out of bounds at about the 35 yard line. That is Nate Rosa. We had a couple receivers developing a little bit uh, on, the, on the outside, on that right side of the field, that far side of the field on your screen but coming quickly was Tyreek Mann on the outside, so he didn't really have much of an option to get it there. So it'll be third down and four from the 34-yard line of Western New England. Big third down coming up here in the first drive of the third. Snap back, Carstetter throws off to the far side. He's got a catch complete out to about the 45-yard line. Good enough for a first down and plenty more. Catches made, that's A.J. Hall. That brings it out to the Western New England 45-yard line. That's really what you want to do coming out of the locker room. Get some quick, simple plays drawn up. Don't try anything too fancy. Get yourself settled back in. Get a couple of big gains. Get, 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 get the ball rolling. Karstetter fakes handoff. He's looking down the field. Down to the near side. That pass was intended for Hall, but nowhere to be found. And that'll bring up second down and 10. Well, plenty of time to sit, as you, as you saw, eight Eagles in the backfield. Again, only 11 on the on the field for defense. So only three providing pressure for the Eagles. So second out of 10 from their own 45-yard line, 13-14 to play in this third quarter, just underway in the second half. Car setter lines up shotgun again, Cole in the backfield. He takes a snap, fakes the handoff, quick pass, far side, he finds Harris. And Harris will drag some defenders out towards, out near the first down marker, and I believe they will give it to him. That'll bring it into Eagles territory now at the Husson 45-yard line. Well, it's a matter of Carsetta reading the cushion really well. The Eagles were backed up a little bit, giving a little bit of room at the line of scrimmage, and does not quite work out for him. Quick snap from Carsetta. He puts it into the belly of Cole, and Cole's going to get a gain of about a yard, if any. He brings it to the near side. And he might have a gain of about six inches on the play. That'll bring up second down and long. Well, this buzzle and man chasing him down from behind. They've got a lot of speed on a little bit sneaky. So second down and nine from the Eagles 44. Western New England trying to take their first lead of the day. Car setter, shotgun snap, fakes the handoff under pressure, rolls out to the far side, throws down the middle, catches complete at about the 35 yard line. And that was Ryan Larson out on the far side, and that'll be good enough for a Western New England first down. Well, again, Eagles defense is doing a good job of forcing him into tight windows, but he's been making those throws a little bit better coming out of that locker room. So, fresh set of downs from the Eagles 34-yard line. Western New England setting up a drive, trying to take their first lead of the day. They've scored seven unanswered points since the second quarter. Hudson hasn't been able to find the end zone since the first quarter. Carsetter takes a snap. He looks off to the far side. He's got a man open and a catch complete down inside the 30. And that's Ryan Larson once again. That'll set up second down and short. Again, those quick short yardage plays have really been killing the Eagles, especially on that outside. Antoine Turner was backed up in his coverage and, and a really just quick, easy play. Second out of four from the 29-yard line. Car setter, fake snap, fakes handoff, finds a man open out on the far side, and he will be dragged out of bounds for about a gain of one. Catch made by Nate Rosa out on the far side. 
That'll bring up third down and four, no gain on the play. And not surprised at all to see the offense sticking out there. Third down and four from the 29 yard line of Husson. Western New England trying to convert on another third down conversion, trying to keep the drive alive. Car setter, four receiver set, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, he's under pressure and he's brought down at the 30. That'll be a loss of about one on the play, but it brings up fourth down. Well, Sean Savage gets his second sack of the year on that one as really just a free blitz coming off of that right, or that left side, excuse me, and no one really picked him up. So I don't know if that's a thing of a missed game plan, but the right tackle, Mike McHugh, just totally missed him. So a loss of three on the play. It's fourth down and seven from the Eagles, 31. Western New England will go for it here. Car centered snap. He drops back, throws out to the far side. It's no incomplete off the fingertips of Rosa. He's looking for a flag. He's not going to get it. It's a turnover on downs, and the Eagles will take over. Well, prematurely, I said not surprised to see the offense out there on that third down, but again, still not surprised. Golden Bears go for it a lot on fourth down and doesn't pay off this time around, but they still have a really good percentage going for it. So the Eagles will take over for the first time in this third quarter from their own 31 as they stop Western New England on fourth down. Western New England has another drive stall on a drive that looked fairly promising. So Visser and crew back on the field. They try to retake the lead. They've had it once today. Visser, shotgun snap, takes the hand off the lower. He's looking down the field. He's going to wide over John Bell. Bell is off to the races. He will go all the way. And John Bell is in for the Eagles touchdown. Well, John Bell does it again. You saw it on that third and 19 conversion, splitting that coverage. Just beautifully lays it into his hands. Visser, 14th straight completion, first touchdown pass of the day. Just drawn up perfectly. Wow. On the first play from scrimmage for the Eagles offense in this third quarter, John Bell all the way. And the Eagles retake the lead. Aaron Parody back out there to try to make it a 14-7 game. Parody is one for one today on extra points. He came in 14-15 on the season. Well, the Golden Bears sitting in man coverage, and, and Bell just blows right past the man on him. And those safeties aren't quite ready. Snap down, kick is up, and it is through, and it is 14 to 7, Husson. How about that? Well, that's a pretty quick start to the half. On the very first play from scrimmage in this third quarter, Visser finds Bell, and that is an Eagles touchdown. As now Western New England, after they have, now Western New England will come back out after they turn the ball over on downs. And they'll try to respond once again, 10-11 to play in this third quarter. Like I said, you gotta come out and try a couple of deep shots, get that, get that uh, passing offense rolling a little bit more and that, that's exactly what they do. Maybe you wanna see it go a little bit more, maybe a few plays to try and keep that momentum going, but I mean, I guess that, that does the trick. So, parody back out there to kick this one back to Western New England. Back to receive. That'll be Ryan Larson. Back, sits at his own five yard line, parody back. Kick on the way, it's a low line drive kick. It's gonna take a bounce at the 35 and it fielded at about the 19. And this will be brought up that near side. It's a decent return. And he'll be brought out of bounds at about the 40 yard line. And I believe that's where they will mark it. So Western New England will start with a pretty decent field position. That one bounced right into the hands of the tight end Julian Bailey Cotty, uh, junior from Seiko, Maine, six foot oh, 190 pounds. So pretty decent return if, if you're not expecting it. So that'll be first down and ten from their own 38 yard line. That's where Western New England will take over for the second time in this second half. Not good snap into the belly of Britt, and he'll have a gain of about four on the play. That'll bring up second down. The gain of three on the play, Car Setter out there in company. Western New, Western New England trying to swing the momentum back in their direction. 
Cox had a shotgun snap, hands it off to Britt. Britt back up the middle again, and he's going to have a gain of about one. One or two on the play as he's going to be dragged back down to the line of scrimmage. But forward progress will give him a gain of two, and quickly it is third down. Well, for the Golden Bears, they're really trying to go back to their bread and butter and just get that offensive momentum back. Obviously killed by that fourth down attempt, and then that, that long touchdown right off that first play is hard to come back from. Third down and five from the 43-yard line. Carsetter, shotgun snap. He's under pressure, rolls out to the far side. Catch is going to be made out on the far side. That's Rosa again, and it's good enough for a Golden Bears first down. Well, again, that outside pass just bites the Eagles for that first down. Alex Brown was in coverage on that one. Couldn't get, the, couldn't get back to the ball on that, that comeback route. So, fresh set of downs on the 49-yard line of Husson. Western New England, snap, quick snap, fast off to the far side. That one, in, excuse me, to the near side, that pass intended for A.J. Hall. They're going to rule it a forward pass, and it'll be bring up second down and 10. I was going to say that looked like it could almost be a, a lateral on that one, so a great idea by A.J. Hall to keep, keep the play going, but obviously rule the forward pass. So, second down and 10 from the Eagles' 49-yard line. 8.44 to play in this third quarter. 14-7 lead for Husson. Shotgun snap. It's on the ground. Car, car starter is going to be brought down as that was a disaster from the very beginning. He's dragged down at the 40-yard line and a huge second down sack. He's going to bring up third down and forever. Well, Tyreek Mann really just exploits that fumbled snap and gets right up the middle on some pressure. I believe that was his fourth sack of the year. Brings his total to four and a half sacks on the season. So they're gonna mark the play dead at the 34 yard, excuse me, the 44 yard line. So it'll be third down and 17 from that spot. Big play coming up for this Eagles defense. Shotgun staff from Carsetter has the catch made by Britt. Britt back out to the 10. He's got plenty of open space. He's past the first down marker and he's got a first down, but a flag comes down at about the 49 yard line. And this one may very well be coming back. I believe this one's going to be coming back. This might have been a block in the back to set up that nice run. And especially with the position of the marker, you just got to think it is coming back. So and it will be a illegal lock in the back against Western New England. So that, so that negates the huge first down run on third and 17. So back the ball up even farther than that, and they'll bring up third down. It was third down and forever before. Now <laughs> it's going to be third down in probably about three states. Yeah, this is third down in an eternity. you got to get it into a whole new zip code here. Well, I mean, that took the air out of the crowd right in front of us. As we mentioned early on in the broadcast, UNE, uh, excuse me, WNE traveled very well. We have a, seen a lot of blue and gold in the stands in front of us. So that will bring it back to the Western New England 39-yard line. Third down and 22. Bryce Carsetter. Lineup shotgun. He takes the snap. He's immediately down the field. Immediately under pressure. And he's going to get wrapped up at the 30-yard line. And another huge sack. And Husson is going to get the ball right back. Well, Phoebus Floyd, Tyreek Mann coming in. They have not shown blitz very often. They have not blitzed very often, but they do it again, and it pays off. It's only paid off a couple of times, but this place has totally shifted. Third, fourth down and 31, and obviously Western New England will come out and punt. That'll be Prent D'Angelo. He'll send this one on the way. It's a line drive kick. It's going to be fielded at the, on the run at the 45. And a quick return is brought, oh, excuse me, at the 35. It'll be brought up to the 45-yard line. So Husson will take over for the second time in this third quarter with great field position. And they're looking to go up two scores. Yeah, we'll just keep keep it rolling for this Husson, for this Husson Eagles defense. And just try to hand it right back off to your offense. And offense scored on the first play last time. Maybe want to take some more time off the clock and, and, and get a scoring drive on this play, or on this drive. But again, this momentum has totally shifted. It was a very close game in the first half, but the Eagles are trying to blow it open here. So, 7-0-1 to play in the third quarter. First down and 10 from their own 44-yard line. Visser shotgun snap, pitches far side to Lober. And Lober with plenty of room to run. He's got a good, decent gain. Gain of at least seven on the play. It'll be second down and short. Well, Lober's a big boy. Once he gets ahead of steam going, it's going to be hard to bring him down. You saw it there. 
Again, 5'11", 205. Got it rolling for a very nice game. That run brings it into plus territory. Now onto the Western New England 49-yard line. Second down and three. Clark continues to run in this third quarter. Four, three receivers set for Husson. Visser lines up shotgun. Sends Casey in motion. Takes a snap, hands it off to Lober again. Lober up the middle, powers his way through, and that is going to be good enough for an Eagles first down. Well, this defense for the Golden Bears just looks deflated. They're not jumping to the ball as quick as they were in that first half. Now the defense has been out on the field quite a bit in this third quarter. We're only about halfway through, but their defense has been out there quite a bit. They Not a lot of energy right now. You had a, you, Your last offensive drive, drive was a complete disaster. You gave up the long touchdown the last time you were out on the field. Western New England looking for a spark, but right now it'll be first down and 10 from the 45-yard line of Western New England. Visser. Shotgun, fakes the handoff, throw far side, finds Colin Casey, and Casey's going to get dragged down, and that might be a loss of one on the play. Well, that could be the spark they need, getting a nice tackle for loss. Read the play well. Colin Casey, and there's a little bit, little bit of a more mobile tight end, more than you would expect, and I was, wasn't able to get around that corner this time. So it'll be a loss of one, second down and 11 now from the Western New England, 46. Clock continues to run, 5-19 and counting to play. Out of the break, four receivers set for the Eagles, two on either side. John Bell's got his man pressed up again. Visser takes the shotgun snap. He's looking to throw down the field again. He's got a man open, and a catch is going to be made down inside the 30-yard line on that far, far side. Well, it's Russ Walker again. He's been producing really, really well this year. He's been very consistent for the Eagles' offense, and that marks Visser's 15th straight completion. Visser now 15 for 15 in this contest. And it'll be first down and 10 from the 27-yard line of Western New England. Eagles offense looking like a well-oiled machine right now. They're trying to go up two scores against Western New England, a team that Hudson has never beat in five previous matchups. Four foot 33 to play in this third quarter. Visser lines up shotgun, takes a snap, fakes the handoff. Now he'll roll out to his right. He's looking towards the end zone. Finds a man in the middle. That's Thompson. He's got the completion. He's going to be dragged down, down inside the 10-yard line. First and goal coming up for the Eagles. Again, just another well-designed play. This one is a little bit more complex. You get Thompson open heading towards on, I believe that was a little bit of a, a slant route, but a little deeper than usual than you see. But again, Thompson, team captain, a great producer last year. Was quiet the first few games. Now that he's got the ball rolling, this offense finding their identity. Make that 16 for 16 for Nick Visser in this contest. First down and 10, first and goal from the eight yard line. Visser, shotgun snap, hands it off to Lober. Lober's gonna roll up to the far side. He's headed towards the pylon. He's in for the end touchdown, but some laundry comes flying in and I believe this one may very well be coming back. So we will wait, we'll wait for the, we will wait for the call, but just based on everybody's body language, this one is most likely coming back. I think that was, again, the left guard, Damon Reynolds, on that one. If it is, that'll be his third penalty of the day. And so there was two, two penalties on the play. So we had a holding penalty against Husson and a face mask called against Western New England, and I believe those, those penalties offset, and we've replayed the down. Yep, that's exactly what they were calling. Initially, they, they were a little confused. They did not call it an, off, an offsetting penalty, but back on as they go jumbo with the two tight ends here. So and what could, would have backed the Eagles up 10 yards, the face mask penalty against Western New England negates the penalty, so they will replay first down from the eight-yard line, a good break for the Eagles. As Visser lines up shotgun again, receiver either side, Lober in the backfield with him. Takes a snap, hands it off to Lober again. Lober looking up the middle. He's going to get a gain of a couple of yards here. And that'll be up to the six-yard line. It'll bring up second down and goal. Well, he tried it again, but Jake Chason was expecting it. Inside linebacker for the Golden Bears. Met him right at the line of scrimmage. So that brings it up to the six-yard line. 
They get down to 3.20 to play in this third quarter. Husson trying to make it a two-score game for the first time today. They're going to roll out four receivers, three on this near side. One, Tyler Thompson one-on-one -on, -one on the far side. Visser lines up shotgun, takes a snap, keeps it himself, gets a block. Visser dives to the end zone, and he's in for the Eagles' touchdown. Well, it's the day of Visser today, huh? Visser is fired up. He keeps this one himself. He brings it in, and he got a great block from Lober on that play. If you looked, he faked the handoff. Yeah, you see in the replay, you see Lober get right in front. They fake the handoff to him, gets right in front, gets that blitzer off him, and Visser just able to dive in for that touchdown. Visser get a six-yard rushing touchdown for Nick Visser, makes it a 20-7 to game. Here's the parody extra point. That is up, and it is no good. So Parity's second extra point miss of the season. And it's a 20 to 7 game for Husson, who's got all momentum rolling their way right now with 304 to play in this third third quarter. Well, it's it's only a two-score game, but it just feels like a lot more, especially this way, the way the second half has gone for the Golden Bears on both sides of the ball. They just look absolutely deflated out there. Now Western New England doesn't have does not have very much going for it at the moment as they're so so far, they've had two drives that are stalled. You had a turnover on. You had a turnover on downs. You face a fourth and 31 where you had to punt. So so far, no. So far, there has been nothing but stalled drives for Western New England in this second half. And really, that's been the story for the entire game. Besides their one scoring drive, they did have. Parity is back. They kick this one away. Kick on the way in the air, end over end. It'll be fielded at the 11-yard line by Hall. Well, he'll bring it out to the far side. He's got some room to run, and he is blown up at about the 36-yard line. Excuse me, that was Ryan Larson on the on the bring back. And that's where Western New England will take over for the third drive of this third quarter for their own 36. Well, I think I think this lack of energy for the Golden Bears is, is one of the main benefits that Husson receives from controlling the ball as much as they do. So you see him low energy. They've been out there a lot. They're tired. Maybe they're not used to it. The Eagles, if they're training for it, they're used to it. So Bryce Carstetter and crew out there trying to break the scoreless drought as he will pitch this one to the far side to Cole. Cole is going to be brought down for drag out of bounds. Looks like they're only going to give him a gain of about one yard on the play. It'll be second down at nine. Yeah, Sean Savage just bounced off his man. Looked like he was going to go for the blitz on that one. Should it have gone to pass, but it goes, goes to Cole and gets off his man, makes that play. So second down and nine from their own 37. Carstetter has a four receiver set. He takes the snap, he's dropping Matt looking to throw. He'll go off into the flat to Cole. Cole trucks a guy and he's gonna be brought down at about the 41. A big hit there from Cole. Well, it's, it's not too often you see a, a running back lay out a linebacker like that. They're just about even. Cole, 5'10", 185, Manny laid out, Sean Savage, 5'11", 183. So just about even, but he really just laid him out there. So third and five from their own 41. Big place coming up here for both sides. Carsetter takes the snap. He's looking to throw under pressure very quickly. It's intercepted by Buzzle. Tucker Buzzle with the interception. He's brought down at the 42. Hudson has their second takeaway of the game. And that is another killer blow to this Western New England offense. Wow. The momentum's all one way, isn't it? That's That's been something we've been looking for all day. Again, like I said, those tight windows that he's been really been forced to, to be thrown into. Buzzle, Bertrand creating a lot of those. Buzzle comes away with the takeaway there. And again, who else but Tucker Buzzle. Buzzle comes up with his fourth takeaway of the season on the interception. And Husson will have great field position to take over. They take over from the Western New England 41-yard line with all momentum rolling their way. They just had another scoring drive. They're trying to get themselves up three scores over Western New England. Visser, shotgun snap, fake hand off the lower, pass to the near side, and he's intercepted, and he's going to bring it all the way back down to the 40, and he comes down himself at about the 35-yard line, and he is in some pain. That's not what you want to see. He's coming back. He had a great return on that. That's the first incompletion for Visser. But obviously for number 16 on West New England, that's 
That's Jason. All thoughts with him right now. That's Jason Shumala coming up with the interception as West New England gets it right back, but that's not the play. He goes down all by himself, and he is down right on this near side of the field. And as we mentioned on the return, he came back all by himself. We're going to take a quick timeout. We'll be back. You're watching Hudson Eagles football on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Selling is all about relationships and building trust. At Greenway, it's our people that have built the business. We're fortunate to have a team with years of experience. They know John Deere equipment inside and out and go the extra mile to take care of our customers. And right now is a great time to talk to one of us about a new tractor. Get 0% APR financing for 72 months on a John Deere compact utility tractor. Nothing runs like a deer. From Greenway Equipment Sales, family owned and operated since 1994. Back here from the Wicked Sports Complex on the campus of Hudson University as Jason Schumala comes up with a takeaway, the second takeaway of the day for Western New England after they just turned the ball over. And Schumala on the run back went down on his own. He was helped off the field. He walked off on the field under his own power but with a limp. So they will take a look at him as Carstetter takes a snap. He's looking down the field to throw. Under pressure, he throws to the far side and he just throws it away. Incomplete on the first down and 10 from the Husson 37 yard line. But what a turn of events this past couple of minutes, Ethan. Tucker Buzzle comes away with a takeaway that looked like all momentum was all momentum was going to head in the direction of Husson. And then Visser on his first incompletion of the day, and he's picked off. And just like that, Western New England down two scores can get back into this thing. Yeah, this is the momentum shifter that they needed. Husson was really just building a mountain right in front of them to try and say, hey, Get over it if you can, and, and New England is trying their best. Second down and 10, another snap on the ground. Carstetter picks it up, quick throw to the near side, and the catch was made. No, they're going to say it was an incomplete pass as Perry couldn't haul it in. It was right in his hands, and he, he looked like he was just trying to turn up field a little bit too quickly. That one comes out. And just like that, it's third down and 10 for Western New England. Now, I think at this point in the game, in their field position, Zeth, and I believe they're in and they're in uh, four down territory. But still a big play coming up here for either side. It feels like they're always in fourth down territory, doesn't it? <laughs> the amount of times they go for it. Two receivers set. Carstetter takes the snap. He's dropping back, looking to throw, looking off to the far side. He looks down the middle, tried to find Harris again, and it's incomplete down the middle. And it's fourth down and 10. And we'll see what they decide to do here. It looks like the offense is staying on the field. Again, forcing really tight window throws to Russell Depot this time from the safety position all over him. And has to throw it a little bit behind him, a little bit too behind him right there. So fourth down and 10 from the Husson 37 yard line, a minute 36 to play in the, the third quarter. After Western New England comes gets their second takeaway of the afternoon. Carstetter, three receiver set, shotgun snap. He's looking back under pressure. Short throw to Britt. Britt's got some space to move. He's got the first down and plenty more. Still on his feet. He's dead to the end zone. And he's in for the Western New England touchdown. Wow. Well, what a play. Usually that doesn't go too far. But, again, Eagles are set up deep back. Gave a lot of cushion. Only the linebackers were that, that line of defense. So he's able to dump it off to his back and, and really trust him to get a lot of, a lot of different a lot of space, make a few men mess. And just like that, Western New England is back in this game as Gilbert's going to write, Gilbert will line up to make it a six point game. As Huston missed the PAT on their last score. Snap is down, kick is away, and it is good. And it's a 20 to 14 game. Western New England, when it j just when it looked like Western New England had hit rock bottom. They get a break to go their way, a couple of breaks to go their way, and they're right back in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Again, football, you can just change that momentum so quickly. And it just it felt like it was, like like you said, it was an insurmountable kind of thing with the, the all the momentum going Husson's way, both defensively and offensively. And then just that quick pick by Visser sets up a nice scoring drive, and they capitalize on it. Ritt scores his fifth touchdown of the season. Make it 20-14. 
Just when you thought Hassan was going to start to really pull away, a takeaway by Western New England. And I bring back far into Eagles territory. Western New England on fourth down and long scores a touchdown. And it is a six-point game once again. Gilbert back ready to send this one all the way with 125 to play in this third quarter. Kicks on the way. It's a line drive kick. It'll be fielded on the near side by Cam Holmes. Holmes brings it up to the 30, and he'll get a couple more yards out to the 35-yard line, and that's where the Eagles offense will take over. So now we'll see what the Eagle, how the Eagles offense responds after Visser's first incompletion of the day. He was 16-16 up until that interception. Well, hopefully you really just want to get it going again. That's not wasn't too bad of a look on that interception, just a little bit misplaced, uh, a little bit too behind his receiver. So trying, trying to get the momentum back, but you want to go with a run here to get that feel back. Now Visser out. Three receive, two receivers set for the Eagles. 119 to play in the third. He takes a snap, hands it off to Lober. Lober up the middle, and it'll be a pile of humanity. It'll be a gain of one or two, but a flag does come flying in. So we'll see what the flag is. It'll be a personal foul, face mask against the defense. That'll be, it'll go against number 53. So the defense not helping their cause in this That's one. That's Jake, Jake Chiasen on the face mask. So that's a free pass for the Eagles. Move the ball up 15 yards and give them an automatic first down. Yeah, not helping their cause in this one. Their offense does their job after getting that pick. And then again, these mistakes, they pile up. So that moves it all the way up into Western New England territory at the 49 yard line. So Husson on the penalty will get great field position here. Visser, three receiver set, sends Cullen Casey in motion. Shotgun snap, hands it off to Lober again. Lober up the middle. He'll get a gain of about five or six on the play, but a flag comes flying in from the backfield. And this one may very well be coming back. And there will be a holding. I believe that goes against number 65. That'll be John Dugan. So back the ball up 10 more, back it up 10 yards for Husson on a penalty of their own. So after all of that, really, that really it only cost Western New England about maybe a yard. Yeah, you flip flop a little bit here. So it'll be first down and 20 from Husson's own 41-yard line. They're backed up back into their own territory. 39 seconds and counting to play in this third quarter. 20 to 14 lead for the Eagles. Visser, shotgun snap, hands it off to Lober. Lober brings it to the near side. Plenty of space still on his feet. He'll be brought down at about the 46-yard line. So Husson gets a few of those penalty yardage, yardage back. It'll bring up second down and long. I believe there's actually a number 37. That's Walker Lenz. Listed as a wide receiver. Again, we went over this a little bit earlier. Kind of a Swiss Army knife for the Eagles getting a couple of carries in this one. So Lenz on the carry. It looks like Husson will just let this one run down to the end of the third quarter. And that's exactly what they'll do. So they'll change sides. After three quarters of play, Husson leads it 20 to 14. Western New England with some momentum on their side. Can they get the ball back or can Husson go up two more scores? 15 more minutes to play from the Lincoln Sports Complex. We'll be right back. You're watching Eagles football on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. If you want a place where you can be seen as an individual and know what you're doing and have a career to look forward to, this is your place.
Start of the fourth quarter from the Wicked Sports Complex. Visser shotgun snap. He's looking down the field for John Bell. It just through his fingertips. Looking for a deep ball down the field on second down, and that's going to bring up third down and long. Well, that's a good way to try and try and start the fourth quarter. Almost there, just a little bit too much on it. Throwing a little bit into a slight breeze. But, but read the breeze a little bit too much. So that'll bring up third down and 15 from Husson's own 46-yard line. Just starting the fourth quarter, they lead it 20 to 14. Joined alongside by Zethan Moss, I'm Ethan Snow. Eagles have led for the majority of this second half. We're up by, up 20 to seven to Western New England scored late in the third. Shotgun snap from Visser, looking down the field once again. Plenty of time to throw. He's got a catch made by Tyler Thompson. No, he drops it. Ball is gonna be incomplete. The pass is incomplete and that brings up fourth down and Husson will punt it away. So getting there is J.J. Josephic on the breakup for that one. Tight coverage on Thompson. It's a tough window for Visser to throw into. And Huston's third point punt of the game. First one of this half, though. So Western Union will get the ball back with a little bit of momentum on their side. They finally stop this Huston offense. As Aaron Parody will punt this one away. Back to receive is Hall. Kick on the way, high in the air. It's a spinning kick. Fair catch is called. And that one will take a bounce at the 20-yard line. Receipt, that'll be A.J. Hall. And that is where Western New England will take over for the first time in this fourth quarter. Down by six. Aaron Parody missed the PAT on Husson's third score of the day. So it is a six-point game. So Western New England getting ready to take over for the first time today, excuse me, in this fourth quarter. Bryce Carstetter takes a snap, hands this one off to Cole, and Cole will get a gain of about two yards on the play, and that'll bring up second down. So briefly, just a couple of quick updates from around Huston Eagles sports. Women's cross country has won the knack, as well as women's soccer having a one nil lead in the first half of the semifinals. Another bring home, chalk up another conference championship for Huston Eagles Athletics. They just seem to be raking them in by the truckload recently. I don't know about you. And, uh, of course, as the be another handoff to Cole, he'll get a few more yards. It'll bring up a third down and four. So man, very manageable for Western New England. But uh, back to a point real quick. Of course, Huston Women's Soccer trying to get back to the NAC East final. That would be tomorrow facing the winner of either Maine Maritime or... Farmington, I believe. So third down and three from the 27-yard line of Western New England. Hudson defense trying to come up with another stop. Western New England trying to tie and take the lead in this fourth quarter. Carstetter, shotgun snap, puts it in the belly once again to Cole. Cole's got some room to run on the outside. He's got a first down and a lot more, and he's brought out of bounds past the 40-yard line. They're going to mark it at about the 41, plenty enough for a Golden Bears first down. Well, the Eagles expected that run to go the other way. They were all stacked up on, on the top side of your screen, heading towards that side of the field. Goes the other way and gets that first down. So 13.07 to play and counting in this fourth quarter. Press set of downs for the Golden Bears. Trailing by six. Carstetter, shotgun snap. Throws off to the far side, that's Hall, and Hall still on his feet, and he's gonna be brought down for about a gain of three. That'll bring up second down for the Golden Bears. Well, tough tackle by Alex Brown on that one. Almost looked like he got, him, got over him, but holding on to make that play. So second down and eight, it'll go down as a gain of two from the own 43 yard line of Western New England. Austin defense. Trying to come up with another stop to help preserve their lead as Cole gets this one up the gut again. Up, goes up to the middle and he'll get a gain of about five on the play. It'll bring up third down, but a manageable third down. It'll be third down and five. This feels like a third down the Eagles need to stop. It's a fourth down. That's a debatable call now. Early, if, had the turnover not taken place, this, this feels like a no-brainer to go for it on fourth should the Eagles get the stop here. But now, maybe not so much. Trust your defense. 
Third down and a very long four yards to go for Western New England. Karstetter. Shotgun snap, fakes the handoff, throws to the far side. It's going to be caught on the far side by Perry. And that's going to be good enough for the Western New England first down and into Hudson Eagles territory. Well, that's exactly what you need. Again, those out routes right on there on the, the outside. And that's just been beating the Eagles all day. They have had no answer for it. Fresh set of downs from the Eagles 48-yard line. Western New England. Trying to tie and take the lead. Shotgun snap. He's going to roll out to the right. It's under pressure. Pass to the far side. Catch is made, but are they going to say he got in? That, got in, And they're going to call the catch at about the 30-yard line. That was Harris getting his one of his – he's got to – that was Harris getting at least one of his feet inbounds. And that's another good enough for – it. good enough for another Western New England first down. This from the 32-yard line. We made a great adjustment back to the ball, turning his body. It was a really tough catch to stay in bounds on that one. Western New England driving, early fourth quarter. He'll hand this one off to Cole into the backfield, still on his feet, and he'll be pushed out of bounds back near the original, original line of scrimmage. Well, it's a great play to break a couple of tackles. Sean Savage, again, coming quickly, promised to Quatra, also trying to make a play for a loss, but getting back to the line of scrimmage on a tough Tough run for is Cole. Very much could have been a loss, but did a good job of getting back near the original line of scrimmage. They are going to call a loss of one, but could have been a lot worse. Second down and 11 from the 33. Taking down to 10 minutes to play. Hands this one off back to Cole. He rolls out to the far side. He's going to run into some contact down just a few yards short of the marker. It's going to bring up a third down and manageable. Looks like it'll be about third down and five from about the 20, from the Eagles 27 yard line. So another third down coming up here for Western New England. They're two for two on third down this drive. The Eagles need to come away with a stop here. Carstetter, shotgun snap, looks down the field, throws just out of the reach of an open receiver. And that's gonna bring up fourth down. That was intended for Rosa. So that's gonna bring up fourth and five and I believe as mentioned earlier, this is four down territory for Western New England. Their offense stand out on the field. Well, Alex Brown got beat initially, but was able to get back to the ball really well, get that pass break up. Almost came away with a pick, but unable to get a second hand on it. Western New England scored on their last first down. That was the last drive. Fourth down and five. Carson a shotgun snap. Looks down the field. He's got an open man. Catch is made at the 21. Catch made by A.J. Hall. See where they and spotted. that's going to be right close to the, the mark. That's going to be very, very close to the marker. And we may very well get ourselves a measurement here. Does not look. It looks like he's just about a half a yard short from our point of view. So, yep, they are. looks like they are going to call. Yep, they're going to bring in the chain gang. <laughs> looks like they're going to bring in the chain gang for the first time today. Very, very close. Judging by the reaction of WNE, their head coach, J Jason LeBeau, it looks like it's just a little short. And, yep, here comes the chain game. Took them a little bit, but here they come. They try to they're going to measure the spot. Now, this is a big call right here, Zethan, because it's either, it's either a turnover on downs or it's a fresh set of downs for Western New England as they convert on fourth down once again. So as we get ready for the measurement, we can't see it with the bench in the way, and good, it is good enough for a Western New England first down. Once again, we couldn't quite see the spot because of the football, uh, because the Hudson's bench had some players standing down near the spot, but they just got enough for the first down, so it'll be first down and 10 from the Eagles' 22-yard line, and Western New England's drive stays alive. Well, a huge call there goes New England's way, and that's that's going to be huge for them. They need to capitalize on it, especially stuff like that. It can go either way, and that can change the whole game. So first down and 10, Carstetter fakes the handoff, looking down the field, and that one's going to be broken up at about the six. Alex Brown right there, and a late flag comes flying into the backfield. I believe it's going to be roughing the passer. That one came flying in after the play was over. And personal foul, and it is roughing the passer. 
And Husson once again shooting themselves in the foot with the penalties. And so 15 yards and an automatic first down. That is, I believe, is going to break. I believe that's going to put them in first and goal territory, or pretty close to it. Looks like they're going to mark it at about the 11, so just outside of first and goal territory. You get a few chances to punch it in. That's what you want to do. Get it? Punch, punch it in. That, and really get that extra point. Maybe you go for two. Maybe you go for two. It's not, it's not going to do much, but. So now a timeout called on the field, I believe called by Coach, by Coach Nat Clark. He wants to talk things over here. Well, once again, just penalties continuing to kill this Eagles team, and they shoot themselves in the foot there with another penalty, this time roughing the passer. That brings the Eagles' penalty count at the moment, eight penalties for 67 yards. Make that nine penalties for 78 yards. And we still got plenty of time left to play. We talked about it. They had seven penalties in the first half alone. And they've, they've cleaned it up a little bit. I'll give them that. But, again, as the defense comes out a little bit more, that's where they start to add up again. I'm, I'm, not, I'm a little bit surprised that there haven't been a couple of pass interference calls. Um, some of the contact between Alex Brown on some of the plays that he's made is could have gone either way. Uh, could have been called, could have been not. Tyrick Mann was called on the pen, was called on the rough and the passer penalty. So, out of the timeout, it'll be first down and ten from the 11 yard line for Western New England who's had a fairly long drive. They got it. They got the ball back with just about a minute and a half elapsed in this fourth quarter. And we're down to 9.38 to play. Trying to tie and take a lead for the first time today. Shotgun snap, hands it off to Cole. Cole off to the near side, still on his feet. He's gonna be brought down at the five yard line. That'll bring up second down and four. Another tough run, they're probably gonna go right back to him to try to punch it in. And he's, but another, another thing to note, 12 fumbles on the year for the Golden Bears, but they've only lost three. So ball security, still an issue. Carstetter once again hands it off to Cole. Cole runs out to the far side. He's gonna get blown up. I believe behind the line of scrimmage. So great, a great defensive play there to try to keep him from heading towards that far pylon. That's gonna bring up third down. And Dethan, it'll be an interesting call here. Say if they do get stopped on fourth, they could take the points and still keep it a one and get closer. You take it, you turn a six-point game into a three-point game. Or excuse me, a six-point game. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, six-point game into a three-point game. Or you could try to go for it, and you could either tie it, get the lead, or you get no points at all. Car setter. Takes a snap, fakes the handoff, throws to the end zone. It's broken up. Broken up on the play. Number two, Parker LaFrance in there. Gets a hand in front of it. And now it'll be an interesting decision. Fourth down and five. Excuse me, fourth down and five from the six-yard line. The offense is staying on the field. Well, LaFrance has been quiet all game, but he's been a great here, asset for the And evening. here comes the field goal unit, so... For a second, they thought about it, but instead they're going to try to just take the points here to make it a three-point game. Hopefully the defense can get you the ball back. Gilbert lines up. He's 0 for 1 today on field goals. Of course, the last attempt was a 44-yarder. This one, much more in his range. Pull is down, kick is up, and it is good. And Gilbert converts, and it is a 20 to 17 advantage with 8.23 to play in the fourth quarter. Well, I really think that's the right call to go and just take the points. Your defense is fresh. You just had a nice long drive, which has been opposite to most of the drives uh, for, for the Golden Bears most of this game. So I think it's the right call to trust your defense to come away with the stop. There's still plenty of time left on the clock, 8.23 to go. Make that 10 unanswered points now for this Western New England offense. 20 to 17, 8.23 to play. Still plenty of time. Husson has two timeouts remaining. Western New England with three timeouts remaining. So let's see what the Austin offense can do here. They have been very, very quiet since going up 20 to seven in that third quarter and have not, have really not been the same since that Nick Visser interception. Yeah, it's just, it really felt like all the momentum was in Hassan's favor and then WNE has just flipped it upside down, which is such a hard thing to do, especially later in the game. 
So Gilbert will kick this one away. John Bell, Cam Holmes back to receive. Kick on the way, end over end, and Bell will field it at about the two yard line. He'll bring it up to the 15, the 20. Bell changes fields, makes a man miss, still on his feet, and he'll be dragged down at about the 26 yard line, and that is where Husson will take over. Well, stiff arm is a man to get off that contact, but uh, still an interesting decision to try and bring it out from deep. I think he was pinned at about the two yard line. He lets it go, that's a touchback and no contact, but brings it back, gains about a yard. So now Husson off, the Husson offense will try to drive down the field, try to kill as much time as they can, 8-16 eight, eight, to play. Try to kill as much time as they can and maybe be able to try to get some more points out of this. Visser and company back on the field. Four wide receivers, excuse me, three wide receivers set. Shotgun snap, puts it in the belly of Lober. Lober up the middle. It'll be a big gain. He's going to be brought down at about the 35. And I believe that's going to bring up second down and one. Looks like he jumped at the end there to get some extra yards. He dove for it. Gain of nine on the play for Lober. And that's all Husson. That's what Husson just right now at this moment, Husson offense, you keep the ball moving, keep moving the chains, run some more time off the clock as we are down, uh, down under eight minutes to play. With a three-point lead. Husson needs to go back to the fundamentals. Keep it simple. Don't try anything too crazy. Keep it safe. You don't want to turn the ball over now. Visser, shotgun snap again, hands it back off to Lober. Lober still on his feet. He's got the first down. He's brought down at about the 42. That is good enough for the Eagles first down and it'll keep the chains moving. Boy, what a tough carry. He just carried a lot of defenders with him. Uh, two or three at a couple of points, fighting for that first down. That's your textbook power back right there. So first down and 10 from their own 37. Clock continues to run, ticking down to seven minutes to play. Fans very much loud, everybody's into this game. It has been a fantastic ball game here on the Saturday afternoon. Visser, shotgun snap, pitch to the far side to Lober. Lober gets a couple of blocks. He'll have another great gain, and he's going to be brought down close to the marker. And so keep it on the ground, brought down at about the 47-yard line, and that will be good enough for an Eagles first down. Well, that's exactly, exactly what the doctor ordered for that one. Just a quick little pitch out to the outside, gets those lead blockers in front of him. It's a very nice gain for him. Eagles just three yards away from getting it into Western New England territory, taking down to six and a half to play. Western New England still has three timeouts, two, three timeouts on their plate in the second half. This is shotgun, Lober in the backfield. Takes a snap, hands it off to him again. Lober comes to the near side, and he is going to get a gain of maybe one on the play if he's lucky. <laughs> I believe it looks like they're gonna looks like he got back to the line of scrimmage, so it'll be second down and ten. Well, number fifty-five, that's Joe Shea fired up for that one. He fell a little bit celebrating that one. <laughs> he gets the stop right at the line. So second down and ten from their own forty-seven. And now under six minutes to play. Just their shotgun. Lober in the backfield with him again. Takes a snap. He'll roll up to the far side. He's looking to throw. Under pressure, he throws towards the middle, pass is incomplete. And that'll bring up third down, but more importantly for Western New England, that stops the clock. Yeah, and that's huge for them, especially when they've been run dominant this entire game. The pass hasn't really been working well. We're going to start the shake up here in the press box. Yeah, as their fans are getting rowdy. As we mentioned, Western New England tra traveled very well today. We can feel them, we can feel it rumbling. Third down and 10 from their own 47 is the Husson Eagles. Western New England trying to get the ball back. They've scored 10 unanswered points in this fourth quarter. They've trailed the entire game. Visser takes the snap, fakes the handoff under pressure, throwing down the field. He's got Tyler Thompson open. He's got the catch. He's out of bounds at the 10, but there's a flag down at the 30. Thompson makes the catch down at the 10 yard line, but we wait on the flag. It looked like a little bit of contact on both sides, but I think this is going to go against WNE. Thompson pushed off a little bit. He was being held a little bit. Kind of can go both ways. Usually they call it against the defense. And his pass interference against the defense. They declined the penalty, and that is a huge gain 
as Thompson made the catch and he was brought down to bounds at about the 10 yard line. And that'll set up first down and goal for the Eagles. Well, <laughs> just a great play, trying to send him on a streak route, just go for it, why not? And it pays off. So first down and goal from the, from the Worcester New England 10 yard line. Visser lines up shotgun, hands it off to Lober. Lober up the middle, he's gonna be brought down. Looks like he's gonna have a gain of about two on the play. That'll bring up second down and goal. Well, Dalton Franco, inside linebacker, another senior for this team. This team is really led by a few seniors dotted around, especially on the defense. But uh, again, another young team, same thing with Husson. Under five minutes now to play, Husson with a three-point advantage, a touchdown, can make it a two-score game once again. Western New England trying to at least hold them the three points here. Second down and goal from the eight-yard line. Visser lines up shotgun, hands it off to Lober. Lober back up the middle. He's going to get stopped. And it looks like he was going to be brought down at the original line of scrimmage. So, again, another great defensive play made by Western New England, and that's going to be bring up third down and goal. Well, Jake Chason on the blitz again, number 53, and just really blew up that play right away. Clock continuing to run. It's going to take down to four minutes, and it's going to take down to four minutes by the time they get a playoff. Third down and goal with a 20 to 7 lead, 20 to 17 lead for the Eagles. Visser lines up shotgun. Lober in the backfield. He takes a snap, fakes the hand off to Lober. He's going for the end zone, and it is caught. What a catch. Did he catch it? Yes, he did. Eagles touchdown. Dom Wilson with the jump ball makes the grab with 3.46 to play in the fourth quarter, and the Eagles go back up by two scores. Well, what a catch. He had Jamison Gill just draped all over him. He goes up and says, you're too short for me. Goes up, makes the adjustment, and comes down with it in the end zone. An amazing catch by Dom Wilson. Parody out to try to make it a 10-point game, but most importantly, it's a two-possession game with 3.46 to play. Husson in great shape as Parody lines up for the extra point. He missed his last one, snap down, kick is away, and that one is good. And it's a 27 to 17 game with 3.46 to play in the fourth quarter. Wow. Wow was right. <laughs> <laughs> what a game we've had here this afternoon. Back and, it's been back and forth all day. Tied going into halftime. Husson opens it up to 20 to 7 in the third quarter. Western New England responds with 10 unanswered points of their own to cut it to three. And on a huge third down and 10 catch made by Tyler Thompson along the sideline, tiptoed the sideline. And it sets up a third and goal score from Nick Visser to Dom Wilson. Visser's second touchdown pass of the day. So Western New England will get the ball back. Down by 10, 346. Now with three timeouts, 346, plenty of time in the world, but they have to be efficient. Have to be efficient, have to get it down quick. You really want to try. You're going to have to go for an onside kick here unless unless you really trust your defense to get a turnover. But judging by that last drive, it's not might not happen. Paradise kick on the way, fielded at the 15 by, by Larson. And he's going to be brought down just short of the 30-yard line. So with 3.39 to play, that's where Western New England will take over, down by 10, and they have to move quickly. As we mentioned in the pregame, Zethan, Husson 0 for 5 all time against Western New England. Husson in prime position here to try to earn their first victory over the Golden Bears in program history. 0-2 in the two times they've met since both teams have been in the CCC. That pass is batted down on first down as it was Carstetter was looking for a pass. It was quickly batted down. Well, Tyreek Mann gets there again. It's, it's about time that they've been reading those quick outside passes. And he gets up and, and blocks that one, which is huge. Keep the, keeps the momentum right in Husson's favor. So just like that, second down and 10. 
From the 28, Karstetter takes a snap once again. Karstetter throws middle. He's got a man open. Catches made, and he'll be brought down at about the 35-yard line. That's Perry once again, and that's going to bring up third down. And now whistles. We have a timeout called on the field by the officials. And we may have a time discrepancy here. So we had a time, we had a clock discrepancy. Need to reset the game clock. <laughs> Believe it, the clock needs to be set at three minutes and 19 seconds. The play in this fourth quarter, we are all set to go. It'll be third down and four for the Golden Bears. From their own 35. Time will run. Big third down coming up here. Western New England in fourth down territory. Karstetter throws to the far side. He's got a catch made by Harris, and he will be brought down short of the 45. Fresh set of downs for Western New England, but he got to move quickly. Well, he almost made that adjustment and turned up field, but he just lost enough of his footing on that play. I believe that was Antoine Turner again making that play for Husson. Timeout, another official timeout on the field. So another official's timeout on the field, 3.07, clock is stopped with 3.07 to play. And now they will wind the time. Fresh set of downs for Western New England from their own 43. Bryce Karstetter takes a snap, he drops back, he's looking deep down the field. Throws to the middle, and a little miscommunication there. The pass is batted away, but very dangerous play right in the middle of the field as the ball got left up in the air. That'll bring up second down. Well, again, he's trying to force it a little bit too much to Nate Rosa over the middle. He had Tucker Buzzle on him, and the Buzzle is a linebacker keeping up with a very athletic receiver. So second down and 10, Carter snap. Looks, throws down the field. He's got a man open, catches made on the Eagles 45, 44 yard lines where they're gonna mark it. That was Perry coming in once again. Greg Perry makes another reception, so that'll bring up another fresh set of downs. And he got out of bounds, clock stopped with 2.45. Another snap made, Carstetter comes to the near side. Pass made, co completed to Perry once again. Perry is gonna be brought out of bounds down close to the 30, and it'll be good enough for another Western New England first down. Well, it just looks like Perry just got lost in the secondary for the Eagles. There is nobody there. Western New England quickly driving down the field. They need at least six on this one, on this drive, and they'll need three more. So this is a 10-point game. Carstetter, now he's going to look down the field and a little miscommunication there as Rosa stopped at about the 15. Ball falls incomplete in the end zone. So second down and 10, but they do stop the clock without using a timeout. Pass was intended for Nate Rosa. Just looked like he was going for a streaker out there and miscommunication. Second down and 10, here's the pass, Kerr starter. Now he'll be taking himself up the middle and he's gonna be brought down at about the 28, 27, 28 yard line. And that'll bring up third down and long. Well, hasn't been great on his feet all year. 49 attempts, only 34 yards. Western New England moving quickly. That pass is intercepted at the 21 yard line. Going all the way through your midfield, and he will be brought down. And the Eagles have just about sealed this one. What Evan, a mean takeaway. Evan Duranzel pulls the reverse Moss. Moss is the man he was on and comes down with it. And with a minute 58 to play, Huston up by 10, and they have the ball. One minute and 58 seconds away from their first ever victory over Western New England. Well, he just sits patiently in his zone, waits for the ball to come right to him, and just makes a beautiful play on the ball coming right back to it. So they will take over inside Western New England territory at the 48-yard line. Western New England still has all three timeouts, so they can't stop the clock. But it just got a whole lot more difficult to try to get back into this game. 
I don't know about you, but this feels like the birth of a rivalry. It definitely, it certainly does. This has been a fantastic game here today. Visser takes a snap, predictably into the belly of Lober. Lober's going to get a gain of about five yards. And Western New England will use their timeouts. They've just used their first one. They'll have uh, two remaining. Only about four seconds run off the clock. It'll be second down and five. Just keeping it rolling for the Eagles, especially on that defensive side of the ball. It's going to be important just to chew as much clock as they can. They should be able to get one or two more good plays to get that first down, and that would seal the game for them. So 27-17 is the score. Husson leading. Looking for their third consecutive victory. They got conference victories over the University of New England a couple of weeks ago. And down Curry College down in Massachusetts last week. And are looking for their third straight victory and their third straight victory of the season and their first ever victory against this Western New England program. Uh, it certainly looks to be headed that way. Out of the timeout, Visser, shotgun snap, hands it off to Lober. Lober makes the man miss. He's going to get a couple more yards here. And he will be brought down at about the 39-yard line. It'll bring up third down and short, and another timeout used by Western New England. Well, for the Eagles, we can see it. It changes really quickly. You saw him got off to a great start in the second quarter, going up 20-7. to seven, And... WE stormed all the way back and brought it within one score and then now doing it again. But you never know when things could change. That's why you've got to be careful with the game plan. Nothing's ever guaranteed. This is a big play right here. Third down and two. Husson, if Husson can convert the first down, the game is over. And they're in a interest they're in a very interesting spot where they could decide to go for it. If you don't get it, Western New England is still backed up in their own territory and they still need they still need, they need to they need to go down and score, and then they need to get the ball back. So very, if Huston doesn't convert here, we very well could see him go for it on fourth down. Visser, shotgun stop, hands it off to Lober. Lober up the middle, and it looks like he's going to be just short. Looks like a gain of a yard on the play. It'll be bring up fourth down as the Golden Bears will use their final timeout. Well, it looks like we're going to be going for a punt. So, and if Hassan, if you do decide, if Hassan does decide to punt it away, you do pin him a little bit deeper. So that could be, that could be the smarter play, especially now that UNE is out of timeout. Excuse me, WNE is out of timeouts. And if they punted it, you say probably about six, six to eight seconds runs off the clock. So you'll have about a minute, ninety to eighty-nine seconds to work with. Yeah, and, and we have seen WNE burst through the secondary for a couple of, of big plays that haven't quite developed the way that they want them to. You've seen uh, the Hassan secondary get beat and commit a penalty or or they're able to get enough pressure on the quarterback to, to force an incompletion. So it's certainly within reach. So the offense will stay on the field. Visser and company back out there trying to convert on a fourth and two. Visser, shotgun snap, hands it off to Lober, and Lober is going to be brought down close to the marker. I don't think he got it. This is going to be very, very close. And we have a down Golden Bear on in the backfield, down close to the 50. And we'll see where they mark, we'll see where they mark the ball. It's number 56, Caden Porter. And it does look like they marked, does look like they saw, they, does look like they, yep, it is a turnover on downs. Lober did not get there. So Western New England will take over from their own 40-yard line with one minute, 32 seconds to play. They have no more timeouts. But again, college rules after a first down, the time stops. So, so you do buy yourself a little bit of time just to get up to the line and get yourself set. And as... Number 56 comes off the field under his own power. Yeah, it looks like he had something happen with his left shoulder. Something I can relate to a little bit. Caden uh, <laughs> <laughs> Porter walks off the field under his own power. So that is with a minute 32 to play. Western New England down 10. 
they take over from their own 40. Our starter takes a snap, looking down the field. He looks down the field deep. He's got a pass complete to Perry past the 50-yard line. Western New England's got to run to the line quickly here. Clock stops to reset for the first down. It'll be first down and 10 from the 48-yard line of Husson. Clock running again, minute 24. First header, pass again. Looking down the field again. This one is going to be incomplete, intended for Nate Rosa. Now we're seeing a few adjustments by that secondary for the Eagles on the, those out routes, those simple out routes. So even if Western New England can't score on this drive, they would still need to recover an onside kick and then get the ball back and then drive down again. And <laughs> by then, you have very little time left as Kerstetter rolls out to the far side and he's going to be out of bounds. That's not what you want to do. You got to throw it away in that position. So that'll be, that'll be, that'll bring Western New England back into their own territory and that'll bring up a third down and very long. But we've seen a few of those get converted today. Western New England did convert a very long fourth down and turn it into a touchdown. Karstetter takes a snap, looking back, has a man open, has the catch complete by Perry out on the far side. He's going to be dragged out of bounds, stops the clock. So that's going to bring up fourth down and about nine to go. Well, he tried to make a move and turn it upfield, but I think that cost his team a couple of seconds if he went out of bounds. This is still about 108, 109 left on the clock. So 106 to play. Here's the, here's the ball game right here for Western New England. Fourth down and nine from the 46. Herstetter, drop back, throws middle, and it's incomplete. He was under pressure, and that is going to do it for Western New England. Hudson University, two kneel downs away from their first ever victory against Western New England. Well, like I said pregame, looking to shake some ghosts of years past to beat this team for the first time in school history. And it's taken a, quite a bit uh, for, for many different players to step up. We've seen Tucker Buzzle on the defensive side. Nick Visser has had a great game, you know, 15 or 16 straight, excuse me, completions to start his game before an interception that, that really started a momentum shift, but the Eagles able to recover from that. So the so Husson's offense back out there in victory formation, two kneel downs away from clinching their first ever victory against the Western New England Golden Bears. Visser kneels down once on first down. They'll only have to do it one more time. It'll be three straight victories for the Eagles as they will have two more games remaining in this regular season. They will be right back here next Saturday at noontime when they will host Nichols. That'll be the senior day game. You can also watch that game right here on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. And it'll be broadcasted live in the Bangor market on Fox 22. As Visser kneels down, he runs towards the bench. That's going to do it as the time will run down as this Eagles faithful is fired up. They just they have just earned their first ever victory against the Western New England Colt Golden Bears on this day, October 29th, 2022. Hudson has earned arguably their biggest victory, not only of the season, but I would say of the past couple of seasons. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the lobster trap game was up there, certainly. That was a tough game this year as, as opposed to last year. It wasn't quite a close game, but this, this year is a very close game, very fun game to watch. And then this year, just a huge victory over WNE. And it's all about that man on the field right there, number 15. And of course, Visser can't, say, can't speak enough about the game that Visser had. We will go into the post game here real quick. Give you a little rundown, some final stats from the game before we sign off for the afternoon. And as mentioned, as we mentioned, Zethan, we'll start it right off with the man himself, Nick Visser. Visser finishes the Visser finishes the contest 19 to 23, 246 yards, two touchdowns, a long reception of 68, and only that one interception in the third. Yeah, pretty spotless for him today. Usually, he's he's one of those quarterbacks that tries a little bit too hard sometimes. That results in a lot of picks on his record but a very clean game for him today. It's probably the best I've seen him play uh, during my time here at Husson, and just an incredible, incredible game. We've seen it go both ways with the momentum, and 
just a, just a great, great football Sunday or Saturday to close it out in October. And John Bell leads leads all Eagles receivers in in yardage, four receptions, 96 yards, and a touchdown. And of course, we'll talk about Dom Wilson, who hauled in the what ended up being yeah. the game ceiling touchdown with just over two minutes left to play. He finishes with 31 yards receiving. Tyler Thompson, Tyler, we'll talk about, want to highlight Tyler Thompson too, who set up that first down and goal on the third down and 10 reception that brought it all the way down to the 10 yard line. So just a lot of guys on offense, a true team win here today. The defense played great, came away with two big takeaways. So just an overall great team win today, which is what you expect in a game, especially against a big game against Western New England. Absolutely, you've said it best. And it's just, it's a great feeling for the Eagles to go three straight wins after starting the season. Honestly, very rough. Losing to Plymouth State um, and dropping a few big games to other conference opponents. Endicott and Springfield both really just beaten down on them on, on a couple of road trips. So it's a, they bounced back well from those. And finally, after you know losing just about 20 starting seniors, they found an identity. So Husson improves to four and four overall on the year. They are back to 500, and they advance to three and one in Commonwealth Coast Conference play. WNE falls to three and five, two and two now in the conference. Uh, I want to highlight John uh, Jim Lober real quick. 28 attempts, 113 yards, and a touchdown. And we'll run over some quick stats for Western New England. Karstetter ended up finishing 28 of 48. Ended up with three interceptions on the day. A touchdown pass for 252 yards. Ian Britt, three receptions for 56 yards and a touchdown. And, of course, we got to talk about Cole. 15 attempts, 69 yards. And he had a touchdown as well. And, of course, on the, Hus on, on the defensive side for Husson, Tucker Buzzle came away with a huge takeaway in that in early on in this second half. And, of course, they intercept intercepting... Karstetter two more times on the day. So just a ov great overall team win for the Eagles as they will move on. They have two more regular season games left to play. They'll be right back here against Nichols next Saturday at noontime. That'll be senior day, and then they will finish off the season on the road at Salve Regina two weeks from today. And another quick update, women's soccer leading 2-0 over University of Maine Presque Isle, Charlotte Messer, and Mar Maria Corletto with the goals in the NAC East semifinal. Hudson Women's Soccer looking to, what, looking uh, along with the men to advance to tomorrow in what would be the a doubleheader East Division Championship. Uh, one quick note for Western New England, this is their final home uh, road game in the regular season. They will finish off their season at home the next two weeks. They will host UNE next Saturday. That'll be a one o'clock start for them. And Endic they'll finish off the season with Endicott two weeks from today. That'll also be a 1 p.m. kickoff. Once again, your final score, 27-17. The Eagles earning their first ever victory over Western New England in program history. We thank you for joining us on this beautiful Saturday afternoon, and please enjoy the rest of your weekend. From Zethan Moss, I'm Ethan Snow. This has been Hudson Eagles football on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. <laughs>